Cal Poly in their triple option offense look to take down the Montana Grizzlies and their conference leading defense. It's next on Big Sky Game Day. From Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula, this is Big Sky Game Day. This afternoon, the 10th ranked Montana Grizzlies welcome in the Mustangs from Cal Poly. We'd also like to welcome in our viewers in California watching this afternoon on Fox 11. So glad you could join us today. Hi again, everyone. I'm Chris Byers along with former Grizz quarterback Grady Bennett. And Grady, it seems as though each week when we go deeper and deeper into the Big Sky Conference, every game takes on added importance, no exception today. Yeah, you're right, Chris. When you get to this point in the season, especially if you're a team with playoff aspirations, really this becomes a playoff game. For the second week in a row, Montana finds himself looking up in the standings at an opponent. Cal Poly comes in here with a 2-0 conference record. But if you're Cal Poly, they're 3-3 three three on the season. They can't afford a fourth loss. That's not going to look very good to the committee for playoff seating. So this is a playoff game. Now, as you know, both teams love to run the football, but they do it in far different ways. And for Cal Poly, the way they attack on offense will pose some major challenges for Montana's defense this afternoon. Yeah, you're right, Chris. Ivory is definitely the leader for this vaunted triple option attack of Cal Poly. You can see his stats. He's an amazing, he's a runner that can take the ball anywhere on the field. He's explosive. He can go the distance with it. But it's not just Ivory. If you look at the top six or seven ball carriers for this Cal Poly offense, each one of them averages closest to six yards a carry. So the Montana front seven is really going to have their work cut out for them today. Yeah, and Montana likes to run the football as well. However, the Grizzlies do it in a much more traditional way. Yeah, more traditional. Jordan Canada, what can you say about him? He continues to roll. Last week, again, goes over 100 yards for the fourth game, 126 against UC Davis. But it's really a two-headed attack. Uh, I tell you what, the thing about this game today, Chris, is if both these offenses have their way, this game could be over by about 3 o'clock. <laughs> Don't leave your seat on this one. It could move quickly. Now for the Billings Hotel and Convention Center keys to the game. Let's go down on the field and join Sean Rainey. Hi, Sean. Thanks, guys. I'm Sean Rainey here for your Billings Hotel Convention Center keys to the game. We'll start with the home team, the Montana Grizzlies, and they had zero penalties last week against UC Davis, and they lead the Big Sky with only 37 penalty yards a game. That is a recipe for success. Number two, they have to win on first downs, particularly on defense when you're going against a triple option team. If you can stop them on first down and get some third and longs, that increases their chances of getting off the field. And third, worst is best. Freshman kicker Ben Wurst had a good couple games to start, but last week he was a little shaky, missing two field goals. Delaney said he will be kicking here today, but wants to see some improvement. Now to the visitors, the Cal Poly Mustangs. For them, they have to get out to a better start. They're being outscored 82 to 17 in the first half of their road games. That is a recipe for disaster. Number two, YPC. That is going to be a key stat here today. Cal Poly rushes for five and a half yards per carry. Montana only gives up three and a half yards per carry, so something is going to give here today. And lastly, big passing plays. We know Cal Poly is going to run the ball probably over 50 times here today, but I think if they're going to come away with a win, they have to get some big chunk plays in the passing game. I'm Sean Rainey. Those are your Billings Hotel and Convention Center keys of the game. Don't go anywhere. Kickoff is next. And welcome back to a sold out Washington Grizzlies Stadium for this afternoon's Big Sky Conference matchup between Cal Poly and the University of Montana. As always, Grady, electric atmosphere here in Missoula. Big game today. It is a big game, and you know, Coach Walsh talked about it. If you look at this series history, he knows just how special it is to play here in Washington Grizzlies Stadium. And he made a comment, as many coaches have, he's coached in a lot of places, and yeah, this isn't one of the big time Division I arenas, but he made the same statement many coaches have. This place may be as loud as any place in the country. Ideal conditions for football today, 46 degrees, mostly sunny, partly cloudy forecast. Mick Delaney now in his second season for Montana, 10 and 7, and veteran coach Tim Walsh, 29 and 25 in his fifth year with Cal Poly, but he was at Portland State for 14 seasons, won 90 games. He's the all-time winningest coach 
at Portland State and has done a fantastic job with Cal Poly. Three winning seasons in the last four years. Yeah, he's a good football coach, and, and I'm pretty sure he's told his guys just what it what it is like to play in this atmosphere and just tell them to enjoy it. Come in here, just enjoy the, uh, the electric atmosphere, play your heart out, lay it all on the line. Fun place to play. Well, if you're seeing an awful lot of pink on your TV screen, there's a reason for that. It is Pink Grizz football. It started back in October 17th of 2009 and has helped raise money for over 300 patients as they fight breast cancer. And it's an awareness afternoon here. Great to see all the support from fans here in Missoula. So Montana won the toss they elect to receive. They will get the football to start things off. Bobby Zalud will kick it away for the Mustangs. Zalud is a good kicker, and I kind of liked how he stepped out there and stared down the kickoff return team from Montana as if to dare them to take it back on him. And we are underway. Salud's kick drives Henderson into the end zone. He'll bring it out. Henderson to the 10, 15, 20. Whack at the 20-yard line. And oh, man, was he hit hard. A great tackle by Trevor Weiss. As the Grizz take the football to start the game and the Payne West starting offense for Montana. Everyone works behind that very talented and big offensive line. Ellis Henderson, the leading receiver for Montana. Jordan Canada uh, opens at running back. And of course, Jordan Johnson will be the quarterback. Jamal Wilson gets the start at fullback for the Cal Poly defense this afternoon. And it'll be tested as well as Algarez, Wingara, Gross, Jake Irwin in at right end. And the secondary led by Alex Hubbard. So first down for Montana, opening play of this game. And the give us to Canada. Straight, oh, fumble. And Montana recovers. will actually pick up a couple more yards on the play. Well, what a shot. Man, great, great fill by the safety. Can't even see. We'll have to see the replay if we can get a number here. But that's a good fill by a safety. Jordan Cannon has been done very well hanging on to the football. And you can see the shot right there. Still can't see the number of the delivery. But what a shot. Canada puts it on the ground. Fortunately, the Grizzlies came up with it. There's the numbers on Johnson. 1,300, over 1,300 yards, 16 touchdowns, and no interceptions. He's back to pass on second down. This one intended for Henderson. Incomplete will bring up third and six from the 25. Well, Jordan Johnson finally slipped to number two overall in the country. He was been, he's been leading the nation in passing efficiency all season. Just had an incredible year so far. Still has, I hope I don't jinx him here, but has not thrown an interception yet. This is the only team in FCS in the nation right now that has not thrown an interception yet this season. That's amazing, amazing statistics. So Montana looking at a third and six on their opening drive. Johnson operates out of the gun. Straight drop. Now feels pressure, runs out of it. Makes a move at the 25, up over the 30. What a great second effort at the end of the play. Grady, and I think he got just enough for the first down, and he does. You know, I talk a lot about Jordan Johnson's decision making, and it's not just where to throw the football. Jordan Johnson makes good decisions in every area, running the football. He knows when to keep it, when to tuck it and run, and he's very savvy about where the sticks are in converting first downs. He does it again there. We saw a big play last week against UC Davis. First down at the 31. He'll draw play here, and Canada's met behind the line of scrimmage, and he will lose four on the play. Well, watch those two defensive tackles today for you, for uh, Cal Poly, very strong up the middle. They have a couple of great defensive tackles. Their middle linebacker is very good. Montana's going to have its work cut out for it, running in between the guards today. Coming off a terrific rushing effort last week against UC Davis on the road. Loss of four brings up second and 14 from the 27. Johnson gives to Trayvon Van, and Van gets back to the original line of scrimmage. It'll be third and long. You know, I like what Coach Delaney did. When you, when you know you're facing such an outstanding uh, triple option, which is going to be tough for your defense to adjust to, it's just one of those things. You don't see it. You can't simulate it. All of a sudden, you play a midseason. A good choice to take the football. Get your offense out there. Try to get on the board early and uh, not get behind if your defense is trying to figure things out. Vance numbers on the season, 438 yards and four touchdowns. Third down call here. A little inside shovel to Van. Nothing doing, though, as he'll be stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Good play by that Mustangs defense. Yeah. As number 41, Nick DeZubner makes the play. It'll bring up fourth down. 
good linebacker play today for both these teams. All three linebackers for both Cal Poly and Montana are very good. DeZubner, the inside linebacker, I said that they're very strong up the middle. Defensive tackles and middle backer. You can see it right there. DeZubner just made a great play. So Shaw into kick on fourth down. This will be fielded by Hubbard at the 22. Hubbard taken down. Good special teams play as Jones in on the stop for Montana. Yeah, good coverage. You've seen you've seen both teams now in the special teams area with really good kick coverage. Not only covering it well, but delivering a good blow at the end. That's a good job. Well, we now get our first look at this Cal Poly offense as they take the field. Leading the mounted quarterback, Dan O'Graves. We'll talk more about him in a moment. He is the third quarterback for the Mustangs this season. First and 10 from the 23. And they'll go inside and not much there. Maybe two on the play. Straight ahead run by their fullback. Let's take a look at the Payne West offense for the Mustangs. Again, we talked about the quarterback change. Dan O'Graves played extremely well last week in a 47 to nothing win over Weber State. And of course, their outstanding running back as well, Chris Stan Ivory, who leads the Big Sky Conference in rushing. Gain of three, second and seven from the 26. Graves on the quarterback keeper, tucks up inside to the 31, will bring up third and two. Well, the size of Dano Graves has been a topic of much discussion as we look at the Montana defense. And I tell you what, front seven, very, very good. Sean Rainey documented at the start, it's going to be a battle between this leading rushing offense and this leading rushing defense. Third and two. Oh, that's going to be awfully close. Looks like maybe from the side judge coming in, they might be a little bit short. Yeah, this one's going to be right at the sticks for sure. But as I was saying, Daniel Graves' size has been a hot topic of discussion all week long. And he's listed at 5'10", 180, but I'll tell you what, I don't think so. I mean, he's a small character, obviously very, <laughs> very tough. There's been guys that have said he might be 5'7", might be 5'8". He's definitely small in stature, that's for sure. Saw so his numbers from last week, 13 of 19 passing. They do pick up the first down. Now Graves keeps the football and he'll be tripped up at the 35. Good open field tackling by that Grizz defense. Well, the crazy thing, Chris, you and I were finding out a little bit about Dan O'Graves. Man, his statistics in high school are amazing. Just, uh, yeah, off the charts. I mean, it's video game stuff. Like, you can't even make <laughs> this stuff up. I, I didn't know all this about him until today, but Max Preps. National Player of the Year, his senior year, accounted for 85 touchdowns in one season. That is just <laughs> phenomenal. You're right, that are video game numbers for sure. Graves keeps the football, tries to get outside, no! What a great play by the Montana defense. That's Matt Hermanson coming up from his safety position and making an outstanding open field tackle. Well, this is what, when you hear about assignment football, folks, here it is right here. You see the dive gets taken by the defensive tackle. You've got to stop the dive first. Then you've got to have people assigned to that quarterback. They did it there. They strung it out. The pitch back is covered. He has nowhere to go. The Grizzlies are so fast on the perimeter. They like their speed and their ability to do just that all day and string those option plays out sideline to sideline. Third and nine for the Mustangs from the 34. Here comes the blitz up the middle. They go with a little screen pass, and that goes for maybe a yard. We'll bring up fourth down. The Mustangs forced to kick it away. Oh, John Cannon got to right there. Just Trevor Ram in on it as well. Just smart, intelligent football play, reading the fact that a screen is being set up. You can see Trevor Ram does not fall for it from his defensive tackle position. He understands the feel of the offensive lineman trying to run that screen play. Screen play. He plays off it. Big play by Trevor Ram. Paul. fall on it they'll have it first and 10 from the 30. well special teams is showing up big already we've had some good special teams play montana comes up with a big one right there the block punt and their offense is in business deep in cal poly territory 
first big turnover of the game, and it goes the way of Montana. Kick was blocked right at the 20-yard line. Trying to see who flew in there and got it. Herbert Gamboa comes up with the block, and what a great job taking it off the punter's foot. I mean, that's, that's stuff that you drill in practice every day. There's a technique to blocking a punt correctly, and he does a perfect job of taking it right off the punter's foot. Here's Johnson, fires, and this one is tipped incomplete, intended for Canada at the 30-yard line. Well, both teams really boast good front, seven, uh, front sevens in their defense, Chris, and we're seeing that right away by both. Uh, both teams really showing up already, making some plays. They're down linemen, those linebackers. Very active, very good athletes. They make plays all over the field. Cam Warren checks in for the Grizz. Pearson comes out. Second and 10 from the 29. And here's Canada. Tries to bounce outside. He's at the 30 to the 25 and down to the 22-yard line. Nice eight-yard run by Canada, brings up third and two. Yeah, really nice eight-yard run. As you watch this replay, it's, it's a little counter toss. He'll take the toss to the right and then counter back to the left. Now, I want you to watch his last cut right here. The corner's got to force it back inside. Instead of Jordan continuing to run to the sideline and maybe only getting four or five and getting run out of bounds, he, he sticks that foot in the ground and goes up and splits those two defenders and ends up getting eight. That's a good job of running. Give him seven on the play, so third and three from the 22. And the pitch to Canada. He's got room to the outside. Dives inside the 20 to the 15. And a first down for Montana. Once again, an intelligent cut by Jordan Canada. The safety actually comes up and does a nice job right there. Well, look at the cut, though. Get right upfield and split that. And a lot of running backs will just continue to sprint to the sideline. And the speed on most Division I teams obviously is good enough to string it all the way out. And now you're not sure what you're going to get. But cutting, getting north-south, good job running by Canada. Gain is down to the 16 in the first down for Montana. Johnson rolls left, still looking, and now throws it out of bounds. Really nobody out there in the pattern to throw to, so alertly Johnson just throws it out of bounds, will bring up second and 10. Yeah, again, that's part of a good decision maker's process. Number 90, Jake Irwin applying the pressure. D. Lyman, a lot of speed, man. That's, I don't think, I think Jordan was very surprised that he was able to stay with him and apply that pressure. Man, is he fast, but Jordan does a good job of just getting it out of bounds. 81% for the Grizz inside the red zone, and rolling left, throwing right, that's a hard throw to make. You know that as a former quarterback. For sure, especially when you're sprinting at the speed that Jordan Johnson mm -hmm. had to right there. Grizz will stay on the ground, get a couple on the play. Joey Counts gets the call. Well, watch the collision here between fullback Jamal Wilson, the transfer from Boise State. He's an unheralded star in this offense. Ooh. Boom. Ooh. I mean, that is a collision. But I'll tell you what, give credit to the backer. Man, Onko, uh, that's a great job of stepping up and taking on that block. What a collision. And still, still getting made the on play. the legs of the play. That's a great play. Third and eight, ball resting at the 14-yard line. Three receivers set to the left. Johnson fires out there. This is caught by Henderson at the 10, down inside the 10 of the 5. And it looks like, well, very close to the first down, just a matter of where they're going to mark it. I think it's going to be just a little bit short looking at it. Nice call down here. Go at the inside screen, the middle screen, bringing the receiver from the outside up the middle, the tunnel screen. And I tell you what, it's uh, fans aren't very happy with the spot. It's definitely going to be short. And Coach Delaney has a choice to make, and it looks like he is going for it all the way. Last week against Davis, Henderson, three receptions and, of course, two big touchdowns that helped Montana get out to that 21 to nothing lead. So they bring the big boys in here, fourth and less than a yard. And now flags fly. Oh, a timeout taken by Montana. I'll talk this one over. Yeah, I'm not sure what Coach Delaney liked or didn't like, but he's going to talk about it. Montana with a fourth and one when we come back. Hey, and Montana looking at a fourth and one from the seven yard line. Montana 
right even split on their fourth down attempts this year. And here we go. Give us to Canada. Canada hit it right at the line of scrimmage, falls forward, he's got enough. Good straight ahead yep. football right there by Montana, no doubt about it, just gonna run right at you. Obviously Cal Pally comes in with an extra D lineman, but look at how Montana moves them up front. Great job by the offensive line of Montana. First down, it's a big play. So first and goal from the five yard line. Under six minutes to go, opening quarter, no score from Missoula. And here's Johnson rolling right, now throws, and that's batted away. Andrew Alcaraz, yep. the uh, defensive end, and again, you're seeing good play by that defensive front. Uh, all that they talked about pregame about this uh, athletic defensive line, how strong they were up, up the middle especially, but both defensive ends have made some good plays thus far. Jones split out here to the right. Hagfors goes in motion on second down. They give us to Canada. Ducks up inside the five. Still going. And touchdown, Montana. Jordan Canada hit at the five-yard line, but would not be denied. He's into the end zone for the first touchdown of the afternoon. Yeah, real nice run. It looks like it's going to be an outside zone play, a stretch play, but Canada cuts it up early, sees a lane going north and south. Now watch, it, it definitely is an outside zone play, but Canada sees a lane heading north and south. That's what you want your back to do, have vision. He can take the first lane he sees north-south. Oh, Canada does it right there and finds the end zone. Good run. Worst on for the extra point. And it's good. 5.38 to go here in the first quarter. Montana strikes first. We'll be back after these words from your local stations. And Grady, the Montana Ford scoring drive all set up here by that block punt. Nine plays, 29 yards, 3-11 off the clock. And they got the key fourth down conversion. And then Jordan Canada from five yards out caps it off. And the Grizzlies on top first. Yeah, real good special teams play. Leads to some really good runs, some good straight ahead, good power blocking by the offensive line. And Jordan Canada finds the end zone. And a real key, I think, for Montana to get ahead in this game and uh, not not to play from behind and put pressure on that defense. This is going to be returnable and straight up the middle to the 20 30 yard line. And a nice return for the Mustangs is Alex Hubbard returns it. Let's go down on the field in a Montana Honda sideline report. Thanks, guys. Grizz coach Mick Delaney told me earlier this week that one advantage he really thought the Grizz had in this matchup was on special teams, particularly with Stephen Shaw leading the FCS in net punting. And actually, in warm up, special teamer Zach Peavy came out to me and said he was going to block a punt today. He wasn't the one that got it, but you know, I think he made a pretty good point. Thank you, Sean. Chris Stan Ivory yet to touch the football this afternoon, Grady, and we've down to five minutes to go in the opening quarter. Inside handoff is going nowhere. Wagonman trip in on the stop. Another good job right here. Just, <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking about that assignment football. This was a little, a little counterplay, kind of a tough play. You can, there's going to be so much misdirection today. Tough to find the football with this offense. But Jordan, Jordan trip stays home, does his job, fills the B gap there. Short game. Give him four on the play. Second and six from the 35. We'll stay on the ground with it, pick up maybe one, and it'll bring up third and five for the Mustang. You, Grady, you talked about assignment football on the Montana defense, and really in this triple option attack, everybody's got somebody, right? You got someone keyed on it on the quarterback, someone on the fullback, someone on the, the tailback. That's exactly right. Again, you've got to make sure you account for the dive, number one, because if they get that fullback dive going, it's going to be a long day. Anytime you see stats on a, on a triple option like this, if the fullback is getting over 100 yards, you're in big trouble. So you've got to stop him first. And then it's a matter of assigning to that quarterback, stringing it out, and making sure you have somebody on the pitch man. Here's Graves on a straight drop. He's got a man out there in the flat. And that's going to be enough for the first down. And that's Ivory coming out of the backfield. And he is the second leading receiver on this Mustangs team. And of course, he leads the Big Sky Conference in rushing as well. Yeah, he's just such a good athlete. He can do it all. 
you know, again, an explosive player that can, when his hands are on the football, he can go the distance. You see that Dan Graves has the ability to throw the football as well, not just to run it. Here's the pitch to Ivory, tripped up at the 45. Give him two, call it second and eight. And you said you were talking about this fullback read where you have to stop the fullback. And Coach Delaney was saying exactly the same thing in his radio show on Tuesday. He said, if we can't stop the fullback, it's going to be a long afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Because if once he gets going, if you can't stop him, first of all, you're in trouble. But then you have to commit so many people to stop the dive that that's when they burn you big time on the outside with the quarterback or the pitch. Second and seven. And Ivory's got a first down and then some. Chris Stan Ivory to the 42-yard line of Montana and a first down for the Mustangs. And Brock Coyle, the inside linebacker, see if we can pick it up on the replay, but unfortunately is down on the ground. You can mm. see, trying to see if we can see on the replay here how he gets hurt, but yeah, you don't really see it. He's on the edge of your screen. He ends up just kind of crumpling over, and uh, right now they're taking a look at him. Hopefully that's not serious because obviously you do not want to lose your middle linebacker no. when you're trying to stop this offense. So injury timeout on the field. We'll step aside. 3.38 to go here in the first quarter. This broadcast of Grizzly football is brought... We are back where Cal Poly has a first and 10 from the 42-yard line. Coil out right now at linebacker. Looked uh, Grady like had something to do with his eye. Yeah, I think he might have just got it like a contact torn out or something. Hopefully it's nothing too serious to the eye and he can get a replacement. But Kendrick Van Ackeren, the backup inside linebacker, has come in and important that he settles in in a hurry. And the Mustangs much more effective on this drive. Up under center is Graves. And he'll keep it. And Dan o Graves has got running room to the 30. Still on his feet to the 20. Taken down inside the 20 to the 19 and a first down for the Mustangs. Well, and right away you can see they stopped the fullback, but Kendrick Van Ackeren, who just checked into the game at middle linebacker, look, he's a little bit late on the quarterback right there, and look at how talented Dan o Graves is. I'm telling you, he's a, he may be small in stature, but this kid can play. He is tough, and he is a competitor. Now they go to the fullback straight up the middle inside the 10, and another first down. Good hard running that time by Omo, or Umo, I'm sorry. Yeah, the first Umo, down. Again, that's the guy we talked about wanting to stop that fullback dive. You can see a lot of room right now. Cal Poly is kind of finding its legs on offense. They are getting that running game going. First and goal from the nine yard line. The problem is, is now you talked about what Tim Walsh said. He understands how loud this stadium can be. They're going straight into the north end zone crazies down there. And Umo keeps the football. He's down to the six yard line. Give him three. Second and goal from the six. Well, we talked about the last meeting between these two, Grady. It was back in 2011. Montana won 37-23, but in that game, there were seven lead changes and a tie. So who knows what we're in for today? Well, Montana definitely has the series lead. They have the upper hand in yeah. that, but this is one of those teams that Man, even though you've beat them several times, it just never feels like you have. And there's a touchdown from that strong fullback, Umo, looking to tie this thing up. Great drive by Cal yeah. Poly. What an answer. Well, a terrific answer to the Montana touchdown. And Umo just steps up inside. And look at him as he just drives forward and gets into the end zone. And now an extra point away from tying this game up. One thing you see there in the replay, fans, is, is how low the Cal Poly offensive linemen are. They cut block all the time in this offense and you'll watch them they get so low on their set and they're going to cut the, the grizzly defensive line and linebackers all afternoon salute on for the extra point and it's good so with 159 to go here in quarter number one the mustangs answer the montana touchdown with one of their own and a very impressive drive as they take that the length of the field and score yeah very impressive as tough as montana made it look and the first drive really just bottling them up and not letting them go anywhere. Not sure if Cal Poly made any adjustments or just got it going, but that actually looked pretty easy driving right down the field. So it's going to be a battle as we anticipated back and forth. And as you said, maybe one of those games where lead changes hands several times and comes down to just those key plays in a game, those key turnovers perhaps. Akania 
Umo, the fullback, uh, really coming up big in that drive. And you talked about it, Coach Delaney talked about it, the importance of that read and the initial read of the fullback. And that's something the Mustangs would like to see more of, obviously, as the day wears on. Well, and then you also saw the one good run by Daniel Graves, not only keeping it and getting some yards, but, yeah. man, how effective he was bouncing and keeping his feet going. And, again, you go back to his high school numbers, just his senior year, I mean, I just almost can't even believe it. 85 touchdowns, <laughs> 8,500 yards. I, that's yeah. just, I can't imagine what kind of scores and what kind of numbers they put up week after week. Would you like that out of your uh, high school quarterback? Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I just, I, I guess you get to a point where you feel like you were really running it up on people when you're putting that much offense up on the board every game. So Montana deep to receive. And Ellis Henderson will take a knee as it's back into the back of the end zone. Well, we have a moment, uh, Grady. Uh, take a look at the Montana Ford scoring drive for the Mustangs of Cal Poly as they have tied this football game. And here it is, nine plays, 69 yards, 3.30 off the clock. And Umo with the six-yard touchdown run. I want to take a moment and uh, congratulate the Glacier Wolf Pack for another win last night as you beat Helena Capital. So two weeks to go in the regular season, and the, the boys right there at the top of the double-A standings, a game behind Bozeman. Yeah, thanks, Chris. Proud of the guys last night. Played well and put ourselves in position now for, uh, for a good playoff run. Whoa. Boy, that is a major hit at the 25-yard line. Where we are seeing DeZubner. We talked about him. Boy, I listen to the crunch right here. Here's a middle linebacker, folks, filling a hole. Oh, man. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that was a big-time pop. And there's his numbers, 61 tackles, 41 of those solo, or not 61 total, and then five for loss. So second down for Montana from the 25. Johnson, good pocket protection. And as Canada up over the 30 to the 37, and that'll bring up a third and three. Great pass protection that time by the Grizz offensive line as yeah. Jordan Johnson had all kinds of time to throw. He did really good protection, obviously good coverage. There was nobody open. Had plenty of time to find somebody, but nobody got open. So credit the secondary of Cal Poly. And Johnson does the right thing, just goes to his check down, man. And I think really important right here, obviously, for Montana to convert this third down and keep the ball. Johnson again, plenty of time. Canada takes a wallop. DeZubner yep. again is, is, he has his fingerprints all over this game early. Listen to this one also, folks. Bow. Wow, what a shot. I tell you, he is the second leading tackler in the big sky right now, and you can see oh. why. Good instincts, gets to the football, knows where it's going, and when he gets there, he delivers a shot. Well, that's the second big hit that Canada has taken this afternoon, and he was stopped in his tracks there. So Montana forced to kick it away. Shaw, beautiful punt. Comes down to Hubbard, who fields it inside the 20. Straight back the middle, now tries to get outside. And he'll be brought down at the 24-yard line. Good contain by the Montana special teams. Addison Owen there with an outstanding play of making sure he keeps contain. We'll see if we get a replay here, but you've always got to have lane integrity or people covering the entire field. And one guy's got to make sure, the outside guy, that, that nobody gets outside you. Now watch Owen here. He's going to come up as he covers. I guess it's not Owen, but right here. Now watch how he'll stay free outside. See that? Mm -hmm. He'll make sure that the sideline does not get free because if it does, that's when big plays happen. So he makes sure he turns it back inside. That's a good job of coverage right there by Montana. First down for Cal Poly, 35 seconds to go in the first quarter. Graves up under center, fires it out here to the flat. That's complete at the 25, to the 30 and the 35 on a first down. Nice little wrinkle on that play as they get it to their wide receiver, Chris Nichols, and Nichols gets the first down. Well, just a quick screen to the outside, and watch Nichols. Just turns on the Jets, gets to the outside. Great job, good speed and quickness. Wow, explosive. Just the 13th catch on the season for Nichols, but he averages 18 yards a catch. Clock runs, 20 seconds to go. First down from the 37. Graves keeps the football up to the 40. Gain of three. 
Well, I think you I think you're starting to see why Daniel Graves is now the starting quarterback for the Cal Poly Mustangs. Just a tough guy again, not very big, but you can see that he runs this offense very well. This is what they ran at, in, at Folsom where he came out of and put up those incredible numbers. He originally got recruited to go to Air Force, spent two years there. So he has run this offense for many years. We're tied at seven after one. Watching ABC 23.1 in high definition. This broadcast of Grizzly Football is brought to you in part by Blackfoot Telecommunications Group, the region's business technology leader. Wendy's, now that's better. And by Montana Ford. Drive one at your Montana Ford store, compareford.com. Second and seven from the 40 yard line for the Mustangs. All tied at seven apiece. Big game for both these teams. Dan O'Graves up under center, keeps the football, now tries to pitch it, but he can't. Brought down behind the line of scrimmage, and a great job by the Montana defense and Brock Coyle. Well, it's good to see Brock Coyle back in there. Remember now, when he came out, immediately Van Akron was a little bit late on his read, and Dano got off on a big run. Brock Coyle comes back in, plays it perfectly, and stops Dano Graves for a loss. Good job by Brock Coyle. Huge play coming up now for the Mustangs. Third and nine from the 38. The kind of situation the Montana defense wants to put them in. Not the best throwing team in the Big Sky Conference. So here's Graves out of the shotgun. Looks, fires across the middle, and it's complete at the 45. And that was a sensational catch. Kind of went behind uh, Chris Stan Ivory, but he reaches back and makes the catch and moves the chains. Well, like you said, the Grizzlies want to get him in this situation. Wow. Yeah, that's a one-hander. What a catch. <laughs> yeah. Reaches behind him with his right hand and stabs it. And again, that's where Montana wants him on third and long. But so far, the last two situations that have been that, Graves has come up with two big completions. Pretty safe pass, too, right? Grady, yep. just yep. a little dump off up over the middle so first down from the 48 yard line and Graves went to hand it off and there's nobody there that's a broken play and absolutely blown up by the Grizzly defense when well, Graves took a big shot at the end too and that's where his size as he takes a pounding again he's small in stature tough as they come but man he takes a shot right there kind of got bent in a bad position but clearly Graves went right and he went left on the sideline report with Sean Rainey yeah, guys, being down here on the field, you get a really cool perspective of the Cal Poly offense and how well they hide the ball in the last possession. Derek Critton actually tackled the upback who had the ball, but he wasn't sure, so then he tackled the quarterback who didn't have it, guys. <laughs> yep, tackle all of them. This time, Graves fumbles the snap and still gets it outside. Flag comes in, two flags come in. Yeah, you can see Graves might be just a little bit shook. The last couple plays not going great. That time he drops the snap. He's taking some shots. Grizzly defense getting after him. So a dangerous pitch. And I think we're going to have a block in the back out there on the outside. But Graves is holding that ankle. And I think that last play, he got, he got bent pretty bad there and twisted it a little bit. And we'll pick up the call here from Kelly Holman. Illegal block in the back. 19 offense. 10 yards from the previous spot. Replay second down. So that goes against Cam Atkins, their wide receiver, will back them up 10 more. We talked about Dan O'Graves. He started the season as the third string quarterback for the Mustangs, a transfer from Air Force, injury to their starter. Eventually he worked his way in to the starting role, had a huge game against Weber State, as we can see the penalty right there. Pretty easy call. Yeah, you can see 19 on the back of John Kennan Gatta, illegal block in the back, and yeah, like you said, Graves, quite a, quite a storied career, and he's found a home now and playing very well for this Mustang football team. Second and 23 now from the 35-yard line. This time, they'll stay on the ground, straight ahead run. Not much running room for Brandon Howe. 
And once again, Montana's forced them into another third and long. The last two, they've been able to, to uh, convert big plays by Graves, good throws, good catches. See if Montana can get off the field now with a third and 15. And the third down conversion numbers for the Mustangs, three of four so far, but they got a tall order here with a third and 15 from the 43-yard line. Graves will operate out of the gun. And here comes pressure up the middle by Montana. Graves shakes one tackle, but can't shake another. Down at the 40-yard line, but a flag at the 44. Yeah, Coach Gregorak is holding his head in disgust. Unfortunately, Montana's going to be offsides. Mm. Offside, 91 defense, five yards, repeat third down. Tyrone Holmes just a little too excited to get after the quarterback there. You don't get a lot of chances to pin your ears back against this team because they run so much. Yeah. So when you get one, man, they're excited. They're bringing the blitz, and he was just a little too quick off the jump. But still, third and 10. Well, let's see what they come with now, what they'll dial up on defense. Still third and long, ball at the 48-yard line. Here's Graves, now at the pitch. And Ivory is walloped at the 47-yard line, well short of the first down, and I think Herman sends the man to deliver the pop. Woo, I tell you, pop. Watch this, folks. First of all, Wagaman doing his yep. job, taking the quarterback. Look at Hermanson. <laughs> what a shot. That is how you feel as a safety. He's going to get in his face a little bit there, too. Wow, what a tackle. And the kick is angled over here and fielded by Henderson just inside the 10-yard line. So when we come back, Montana with the football, all tied up at 7. Grady, we talk about assignment football, and watch how the Montana defense reacts to each person. Yeah, the dive, the dive is taken, and look at Wagaman, how he is on that quarterback. Mm -hmm. And if that quarterback knows that he's got to pitch it quick and he's going to take a shot, it really changes his mental process and what he's thinking. Uh, so far, the Grizzlies, I mean, they've given up a little bit, but they've been pretty good with their assignments against this triple option. First down from inside the 10-yard line. Johnson's going to throw from his end zone. And this is caught up to the 25-yard line. And a first down. Nice job by Jamal Jones, who gets open out there and gives Montana a much better field position. Well, talking to Kofense Henson, the offensive coordinator today, look at Johnson yeah. hanging in the pocket. But the, Jamal Jones is a guy that they want to get a little bit more involved in their offense. They know he's got big play potential. He's a big play threat. He's done some good things. They, they want to get him a little bit more involved. You see his stats on the year. Uh, definitely want to get him the football more often. Average is 16 yards a catch, so the gain is all the way to the 28, and now they'll stay on the ground. And once again, not much there as far as running room goes. Canada gets maybe two on the play. Now, go back to what I was saying earlier about this outside zone. Now, you watch here, the first couple, Canada was able to really get north-south. Now, watch this one, how they string it out mm -hmm. and make him continue to bounce to the sideline. Every time you continue to bounce to the sideline, you're going to end up with that minimal gain most times. Good job by, by Cal Poly of stringing it out, especially at the corner, just to keep it going side to side. DeZubner could walk off the field now and have pretty good numbers already. I mean, he's been in on a lot of plays, got the tackle there. So second and eight from the 30-yard line. Johnson rolls right, still looking, feels pressure, now throws it away. Nobody to throw it to. Andrew Alcaraz putting pressure on Johnson, and that'll bring up third down. Uh, you got to give Cal Poly's defense a lot yeah. of credit. Montana wants to run the ball, run the ball, run the ball, and then play action off of it. And normally Jordan Johnson is able to get around the corner on that play action or at least find room to set up and throw. But Cal Poly, both defensive ends, has played that very well, kept him contained, put pressure on him, and the coverage has been outstanding. Good job by the Mustang defense and forced Montana into another third and long. Here's the numbers on Johnson, 4 of 10 for 32 yards. Well below his normal numbers, so third and eight from the 30-yard line. Johnson fires across the middle, batted down. Alcaraz again in on the play, and that'll bring up fourth down, and the Grizz are forced to punt away. 
I'll be honest with you, if you can see this in your replay, this one, they may be fortunate that this was batted. You can see he has Cam Warren coming across the middle, but the Zubner, the guy we've talked about all day, yeah. was right there. And I honestly believe he picks that off. When Jordan watches film, I don't think that he saw DeZubner sitting there, and I think he's going to be glad that one got batted down. Shaw averaging just over 46 yards a kick and gets this one away from the 20-yard line. Beautiful kick. Fielded there at the 25. Return three yards. So when we come back, Cal Poly with the football in a tie game. Back after these words from your local stations. Team comparisons, Grady, for both of these teams. And boy, look at the rushing offense, almost exactly even. Yeah, it is. Look at, though, the number one rushing offense in the big sky, Cal Poly, against the number one rushing yep. defense. And that's what's got to give today. Obviously, that's where the battle lies. And so far, it's been a pretty good battle. First down, and here goes Ivory straight up the middle. And boy, did he get through that defensive line quickly, all the way out to the 48-yard line and a first down. Yeah, just a good, just down, down, bring the guard around. Nice blocking by the front. Huge hole opens up. You can see why Ivory leads the big sky in rushing yards per game with 114. And, well, he's on his way already to another big game. Coach Walsh has got to like what he's seen, especially here in the second quarter. And the Mustangs starting to take control on offense. Now a timeout taken by the Mustangs. Their first here in the first half comes at nine minutes. And they'll talk it over. Well, we didn't see much of Ivory in quarter number one, but in the second quarter, Grady, Kristan has really come up with some nice big runs, and they're starting to find some things that work. As you see, his number six carries for 46 yards already. Right. The thing about a team like this is they're just going to stay with it. They're going to be patient. They're not obviously going to get away from what they do. They're just going to keep banging and keep banging, and eventually things are going to pop for them, especially when you have a team that's as well coached as this Mustang team is. Uh, they execute well, and, man, you can start to see it. I mean, you just keep at it. You stay with it, and mm -hmm. eventually things start to pop a little bit. It's a first down gain to the 48-yard line. Nine minutes to go in this opening half. We're all tied at seven. Here's Graves. Looks, now throws, and this is caught right at the 50-yard line. It's going to be a gain of three on the play as Brandon Howell, the fullback, slips out of the backfield and makes the catch. Well, Graves does a nice job standing in the pocket. little play action here. You see he's looking downfield, gets a little pressure, escapes. Just a nice job. Caleb Kidder applying yep. a little bit of pressure, but so far the uh, Cal Poly offensive line is doing a nice job in both the run game and the pass game. Howe now lines up in the backfield. Second and six. Howe gets the football and very close to the first down. They're going to mark him two yards short at the 44-yard line of Montana. Well, right now, it looks like they're having most success with this guard around play. They're just going to block down with one side of their offensive line and bring the guard around. Daniel Graves having a real nice game. Yep. Here we go on the pitch. Ivory has got a first down inside the 40. And Chris Stan Ivory down to the 35 of Montana and a first down for the Mustangs. Well, I talked about cut blocks. Watch the uh, watch the wingback number two, Cole Stanford. He hasn't gotten a lot of look at the cut mm -hmm. right there. He takes the legs out of Kanangata. Now your your offensive linemen are doing that. They're cutting the defensive tackles and cutting the linebackers. And then you get your wingbacks and your receivers cutting on the perimeter. I'll tell you what, it's a tough thing. You got to teach all week how to defend and play off of those cut blocks. Ivory running downhill right now in the second quarter. And again, just bowls forward to the 30. And a gain of five, second and five. Impressive drive here by Cal Poly midway through the second quarter. And yeah, there it is. There's that, that guard around again. Yep. They're just doing a nice job, point of attack, of getting movement on the Grizzly defensive line and then bringing that guard around up into the hole. And right now, that's the play that seems to be having the most success for Cal Poly. Rushing yards so far, and Cal Poly with a big edge, 123 already to Montana's 35. Second and five from the 30. Mustangs stay on the ground. 
very close to the first down. Just depends where they mark it. Well, and I said in the open that it's not just Ivory. Obviously, he's very good, but yep. look at the different backs now that are coming in and getting touches. Again, if you look at their stats, there are seven carriers, seven ball carriers for the Mustangs that are averaging almost six yards a carry. Unbelievable. That was Garcia. Third and a short one from the 26. And Howe's got a first down for the Mustangs. Falls forward to the 33-yard line, and that'll move the chains. Well, if you're Mick Delaney right now, you know, they're starting to get things going a little bit, but you can't really be that mad at your defense. Really, right now, I think this falls on the Grizzly offense. They have not been able to produce anything, keep drives going. They've gotten themselves in third and longs too often. They've had to punt too much. Really, man, your offense has got to play better. When you play a team like this, your offense it has to stay on the field and produce points. Gain is down to the 23. Graves looks up, and he's got a man at the five-yard line. And a sensational catch inside the five as Umo makes the reception, and they'll mark it right at the five-yard wow, line. Wow, he can do it all. He's a fullback. He's taking dive plays. Look at this. Goes out as a receiver. Man, now Graves is six for six. He's perfect on the day. When you have your fullback running the ball like he is and making catches, Great drive by Cal Poly. They get it into the end zone. They are excited on that sideline. Their first lead of the afternoon on the touchdown comes at 5.57 to go here in the second quarter. And again, straight ahead running up over the right side. Yeah, Graves, biggest cheerleader on the field right there. And Cal Poly now with a 13-7 lead. Well, there isn't a big contingent of Cal Poly fans, obviously, but they are very excited, the ones who came. and. They have to like what their team is doing here in Washington Grizzly Stadium. Zalud on for the extra point. And the kick is good. So the touchdown comes with 5.57 to go in quarter number two. Montana to receive when we come back. And the Montana Ford scoring drive, nine plays, 71 yards, 328 off the clock. Akaniane Umo with the four-yard touchdown run. And keep in mind, he's the one that hauled in the long pass, Grady, that set up the touchdown. Yeah, you can tell what a great athlete he is. That was, uh, I mean, for a fullback, you don't expect a, a lead fullback to do that kind of pass receiving, but man, that drives all on him. Football rolls out of the end zone. So Montana now going to work, trailing for the first time this afternoon. And, Still plenty of time to go here in the first half at 5.57 to get something going, but the last couple of possessions for Montana, Grady, it's been tough sledding against this Mustangs defense. It has, and it really the onus falls on this Montana offense right now. They have to get something going. They've got to sustain a drive. You, you, can't, you can't really come in and expect to completely shut down this, this triple option. There's no way. The way you stop it is to keep it standing on the sidelines by yourself putting together some really good offensive drives. Montana hasn't done it yet today. They need to get it going right now. Mustang showing blitz off the corner. Now they'll back off, and Canada bounces forward. Almost pinballs his way to the 31-yard line. He was hit. He got bounced about four yards right up the middle. Well, their number one play is going to be that outside zone, that stretch play, trying to get to the sideline. But again, as I mentioned, the, the running back has the ability. He's got vision, and he's going to find that first north and south running lane. He's going to plant and get upfield, and Canada did it right there. Numbers on Canada, nine carries and 28 yards. Gain of seven on that one, second and three, and this time met right at the line of scrimmage. And this will bring up third down. Yeah, just a nice job. You see a corner blitz that time. Yep. Corner blitzes in from the edge and really forces Canada back up inside, right into the arms of an outstanding preseason All-American candidate, Gross. One of the big tackles we talked about at the open being so solid up the middle makes a play right there. Third and four, Montana five of seven so far. Johnson on a straight drop. Now fires out here for Jones in and out of his hands. But I think we're going to get pass interference. It came at midfield. It looked like his arms got raked right as the ball was coming in. Yeah, the ball was inaccurate. Jordan Johnson who hasn't been on today as much as he, he has been this year. You saw the stats a little bit earlier, only four for 11. He just missed through the flag route a little bit too far upfield. But the Grizz are going to be uh, fortunate. Number one defense. 
15 yards, first down. Well, right now, I tell you, the Grizz will take a third down conversion any way they can get it. Even if it's by penalty, they really need to stay on the field right here. The last thing they could do is go three and out in this situation. Walsh doesn't like it. I wonder if he's arguing if that was a catchable ball, but right before he goes up for it, looks like Samudi got, uh, got his arms up there. So nevertheless, a first down from the 46. Here's Johnson. Johnson long and deep for Henderson, and this one is, are they gonna say it's intercepted? That is the first interception thrown this year by Jordan Johnson. Well, I sure hope I didn't jinx him because I talked about it, but you said long and deep, Chris. Not long or deep enough. Yep. He had Henderson if he lays it out there in front of him and lets him run to it, but he was short with it. And there's his first interception of the year. All yep. he's got to be is just get it out in front. Henderson had a step. Might have been a touchdown. You can never be short on those deep balls. Jordan Williams was the man on the interception for the Mustangs. The junior out of Tracy, California, and he's done something no one's been able to do this year, and that's pick Jordan Johnson. So the Mustangs first down, still 4.40 to go, and they stay on the ground up over the 20-yard line, short gain on the play as Ivory gets the call. Well, what becomes, what becomes kind of deflating as a defense yeah. is you just said short gain, but, man, even though short gains are three and four, and, man, it just gets tough to stop. There's the replay on the interception. Again, I think Henderson had a step, but Johnson just puts it out in front of him. Unfortunately, it's a pick, and now the Grizz defense has got to go to work and get a turnover of force of three and out. Second and seven, Graves keeps the football up over the 25. He'll be a yard short of the first down. Well, what, one thing their offense has done for much of this first half, Grady, is they're putting themselves in this third and one, third and two all afternoon. Yeah, Sean Rainey talked about it. One of the keys to the game was winning on first down because if you can get them in third and long, although today Graves has done a nice job on converting on third and long. So really, Cal Poly's had the answer for everything, but definitely want to try to get them in third and long because when you get in this third and short, uh, it is just a murderous task to try to stop them. And Graves pulls it down. He's got a first down and all kinds of running room. Goes out of bounds at the 38-yard line that'll stop the clock. But Dano Graves very alertly saw that he had plenty of running room. You see it right there. He looks to his left, and he's off to the races. Yeah, and unfortunately, they had the play covered very well. Good job by the Grizzly defense with their discipline. Third and short, they did not fall for the play action. That was a good offensive call because, well, they really could have caught him and burned him deep. The Grizzlies covered it, but Graves got away on the scramble. Cal Poly dominating the time of possession now with just over 15 minutes. And Graves again keeps it, picks up a block at the 45. Graves inside Montana territory, down to the 44, and he is slow to get up. I tell you what, folks, he is tough. We talked about how small he is. He is a small guy, but you can see his toughness, just incredible. Now, here's more of a traditional zone read that you see more often, reading the end, and Tyrone Holmes chases the running back. Good keep by Graves, another big gain, good carry by him. And the Mustangs still with two timeouts remaining here in the second quarter, at clock running, 2.45. This time, Howell falls forward to the 41. Gain of three, second and seven. Again, that's that's a good play by the Grizzly defense. But yep. again, what's kind of deflating is it's still a three-yard game. And so almost every time, they're just chipping away at you, getting threes and fours. And as you see, those threes and fours all of a sudden turn into 15s and 20s. Second and seven. And this time, Ivory tries to bounce outside. And taken down at the 30, looks like they'll mark it at the 38-yard line. Man, is he a good running back. I mean, the Grizzlies have him hemmed in right here. This one looks like a sure loss on the play. Even right there, looks like they were going to get him for a loss. But look at the cut. Still ends up getting about three yards on it. Third and four. Jordan Tripp in on the stop on that last play. So the Mustangs at the 38. Love to put some more points on the board before half. 1.45 to go. Clock runs. Graves looks right. Fires out there. Incomplete will bring up fourth down. 
You know, that was intended for Cole Stanford. He's really done a nice job throwing the football today. Even though he's been a little bit inaccurate, his receivers has made, have made plays for him. That time he was way too far off. There was no way Stanford could make the play. And you can see Graves right there. He is definitely gimpy. That shot he took two series ago. Yeah, and that is his first incompletion. Six for seven now, 52. But yeah, that, that right ankle is definitely a little bit ginger. All right, so they'll kick this one away, and it'll be fair caught by Henderson down around the 10 yard line. 134 to go in this opening half. Back after these words from your local stations. Getting this broadcast of Grizzly football is brought to you in part by Montana Honda Association. Visit your local Honda dealer. Payne West Insurance. Clients, colleagues, community. Billings Hotel and Convention Center, the one with the water slides, and by Northwestern Energy, delivering a bright future. Montana first and 10 from the 12, and Johnson will be wrapped up inside the 10 yard line. Well, that Mustang defense, they're jumping all over the place. They're pretty fired up. And there's Gross, that defensive yep. tackle, all big sky performer, very good player. Haven't called his name a lot, but the last couple plays, he's been in on them, and he's starting to make his presence felt. They're going to get a close-up of Johnson, but look, he just speed rushes on the outside. Right up that B gap, just puts on the speed and gets to the quarterback. And Cal Poly will use a timeout, and I think their thinking is, Grady, that uh, they got a chance to make something happen before half, maybe a, put some max pressure on a, a, on a fourth down punt. Uh, they can stop the clock one more time with a minute 27, but... Boy, time of possession, we've already shown you that. And you see number 16 warming up, that's Tanner Trossen. He is from the same high school as Dan O'Graves is from. Yeah, I tell you, watching both those guys in warmups, uh, both incredible athletes, it looks like he has the same type of ability as, as Graves has. And Canada again, boy, does he take a wallop, gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Total yards uh, clearly in favor of the Mustangs so far today as they've dominated after that initial drive by Montana, which gave the Grizz the lead. Pretty much Cal Poly's offense has set the tone. Yeah, they have. And, and again, you, you really can't blame the Montana defense because they've been on the field a lot. Yeah. And uh, the Montana offense just did, new, did not do their job in this first half with what they really needed to do coming into this game. So Montana facing a third and nine from the 13. And we'll see if Cal Poly uses their final timeout after this play. And inside handoff to Canada. And Canada gets up to the 18-yard line. And indeed, Cal Poly now will use their final timeout of the first half. Yeah, that's a nice job by Coach Walsh right there, managing the time, waiting on that first play just to kind of see what happens. They get the sack, so timeout. Mm -hmm. Now he bleeds it down, takes a timeout right there, and he's going to get a chance to apply some pressure. Like you said, hey, take a shot, go after one right here, maybe try to get a block punter at least. 40 or 37 seconds yeah. left, set up a punt return, and then you never know. Good field position, take a shot at the end zone. That or maybe a long field goal. They've got a good place kicker, has a long of 53 yards this season, or a long of 50 yards. So we'll see what they come with here on fourth down as we have 37 seconds to go here in quarter number two. I'll tell you what else they've done is taken the crowd out of the game in the second quarter. Yeah, they really did. They really did. Nice kick. High boomer coming down at the 45-yard line. Signal for and fair catch made by Alex Hubbard. So a short field for the Mustangs. They have no timeouts remaining. 30 seconds to go, but have the football at the 45. Well, see who comes out at quarterback. Again, we talked about Graves' ankle being a little bit ginger, and so see if his backup will come in. Nope, Graves comes back on. Thirty seconds left in the half, 55 yards to go with a good place kicker. Man, you're thinking you can try to get maybe 20 to 25 yards and give yourself a chance at three more points. Okay, here we go with a little swing pass outside, and that's a first down carry by Ivory up to the 45-yard line. We talked about Zalud and his numbers. He's five of eight 
on the season, 62% and has a long of 53. So he's definitely got the leg, Grady, for a long field goal. Yeah, he does, and that was a nice job on that first play. Spiked the ball right there to stop the clock, second and 10, but again, maybe 10, 15 more yeah. yards, and they're gonna have a, sh a shot at it. You know, they could still use the middle of the field if they get it to a first down because the clock would stop to move the chains. They could get up, spike the ball. Anything inside of that first down, though, and without any timeouts, they would have to work the outside of the field. Second and 10 from the 18. Here's Graves. Oh, and he's going to go for it long and deep, and it is incomplete. Knocked out of there at the 15-yard line. That was intended for Cam Atkins, and he's shaken up on the play. Well, and I thought Hermanson might have just taken a, a bad angle right here. I don't know if you'll see him in your Yeah, there he is right there trying to close on. He just took a, a too deep of an angle. That was almost complete. Atkins had a really good shot at that. Man, would that have been a big play. Yeah. So third and 10 with 13 seconds now in the half. Graves will operate out of the gun. This time they run a little option to the left. And out of bounds at the 38-yard line. And again, players shaking up on the field. Corey Garcia gets the call. Well, talking to, talking to Coach Gregorak today, you know, watch another cut block on the edge. You won't see it there, but it's so tough to simulate those cut blocks in practice. And the reason is, is you can't, you don't want to tell your scout team to cut your starters all week long. So you don't go out and practice that. Uh, you try to drill it, you try to work on how to get off of it, get around it and shed those blocks. But again, you're not gonna go out and practice getting cut all week because it's too dangerous. So when you play a team like this, man, it is just, it's tough to simulate all week long in practice. Bobby Zalad now, spot of the ball will be at the 46 yard line. This will be a 56 yard attempt from the left hash. Zalad got a foot into it. And this one is no good. Boy, he had plenty of leg, didn't he? Well, he gave it a ride. I tell you, right when it took off, I think everybody kind of held a collective breath. It looked like it might have a shot, but just a little bit short and to the right. But you got to give Coach Walls and his staff and players credit for the way they managed the clock down there that last minute and a half. That was an outstanding job just to give themselves a chance. So Bobby Zalad from 56 yards, and here it is. Really got his foot into it, but misses that one just wide right. Montana will take a knee, and that takes us through the first half of play. And Cal Poly has come into Missoula and taken a 14-7 lead over the University of Montana. Grizz scored first in this game, but Cal Poly answered with two touchdowns. And uh, if you're a visiting team, you'll take that. Oh, absolutely. If, if you would have told me that, that the Grizz would have held Cal, Cal Poly to 14 points in the first half, I, I would have been happy with their defensive play. I think what's disappointing, and I'm sure Coach Delaney's upset with right now, is the offensive play in the first half. Not only just getting seven points, but really not sustaining drives, not keeping the ball very long. A lot of three and outs. Let's go down on the field with Sean Rainey, who's joined by Cal Poly coach Tim Walsh. Thanks, guys. And Coach, 14-7, but almost a block punt away from being 14-0. You know, how, how happy are you with the way your team played in the first half? Well, it's a good 30 minutes, but you got to play 60 minutes of good football. I mean, it sounds cliche but that's reality we got to play another 30 minutes. We're playing well. They're going to come out with some answers. Hopefully we have some more answers ourselves and see what happens. Your quarterback, Daniel Graves, played a pretty fantastic first half, but he's kind of banged up. Are you worried about his ability to finish out this game? Well, we got some other guys that have some experience now, so that's a good thing. But we want Daniel to be the guy. Daniel's going to have to tough his way through it, and hopefully he can. All right, thanks, Coach. Good luck in the second half. All right, we'll be right back with more of the Wendy's Halftime Report coming up. And welcome to the Wendy's Halftime Report. Uh, Cal Poly here in Missoula with a 14-7 lead over the Montana Grizzlies. And what started out great for Montana, taking a 7-0 lead. But as the first half wore on, 
Cal Poly getting it done on the on the ground. Akaniene Umo with the touchdown run. That made it 14 to 7. Could have been a lot worse, Grady, as they piled up the yardage in that first half. Yeah, they did. They got their run game going. And, and uh, as I said several times, it wasn't just a product of their execution. And actually, the Grizzlies on defense played OK. But it was the inability of Montana's offense to keep any sustained drives going, to move the chains on third down. Uh, didn't run very many plays and definitely don't have very much to show for it. All right, so the Wendy's halftime report continues here in Missoula. Welcome back to the Wendy's halftime report. I'm joined by breast cancer survivor Christy Grayson. And, and Christy, quite an atmosphere. How does how does this game, you know, what does this game mean to you? This game is so important just for the awareness of cancer, not only breast cancer, but all kinds of cancer. Um, to see everybody in the community coming together and really supporting a really good cause. And tell me about you know the walkthrough before the game. You got to go through the helmet and all that. What, what was that like for you? That was pretty cool. Um, I have a little boy, he's six, and he thought that was just the cat's meow. Um, it was pretty cool to come through there and know that so many players and survivors and everything else have, have come through that tunnel as well. And then how, how important is it to raise awareness? And, and you see the players out here wearing pink and, and all that. So how important is it to raise awareness for breast cancer? It's amazing, you know, just to have everybody support a cause, not only for breast cancer, but all kinds of cancers. Cancer doesn't discriminate. I'm 35 years old and I have terminal breast cancer. And, you know, it, it affects everybody. So the more awareness we can raise, the better, because it's going to affect somebody one way or another. And how has Team Up Montana helped you in particular? Um, they've helped me in particular in the sense that um, not only financial support, um, you know, a lot of people have to travel to get to their treatments and whatnot. Um, but for me personally, not only the financial support, but just the emotional support. It's like family. They truly care about this cause. And every dime that's made stays in Montana to help our cancer patients. Definitely. Thank you, Christy. Enjoy the rest of the game. We'll be right back with more on the Wendy's Halftime Report. I'm Sean Rady, joined by U.S. Center John Tester. And Tester, I was going to ask you if you're a Grizz or a Cat fan. I see you wearing the Grizz shirt. But, uh, Grizz, Grizz, Grizz fan today, man. <laughs> Senator Tester. Um, all right, so you told me you didn't play football growing yeah. up, more of a music guy, yeah. but, but a football fan. Though. Oh, absolutely. No, this is, this is an event. I mean, you know, what goes on here in Missoula every time the Grizz have a home football game is incredible. And it's great to see folks get fired up. And hopefully, second half, the Grizz will come out and play a little better and beat these guys. So you're from Big Sandy, which is close to Haver, yeah. Montana. Yeah. And there's a pretty famous Grizz, yeah. former Grizz player, Mark Mariani. So I want to yeah. ask you, if you go to a restaurant in Haver and there's one one table left, are you getting it or is Mark getting oh, it? Oh, Mariana's is getting it. I, got, I don't have a chance. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you, John Tester, for joining Absolutely. us. We'll have more with the Halftime Report coming up next. Welcome back to the Wendy's Halftime Report here in Missoula, where Montana trails Cal Poly by a score of 14 to 7. But Grady, we put up the numbers here in the first half, and if you were just joining us and looked at these numbers, you would not think that the Mustangs would be up by just a touchdown. Oh, exactly. I mean, it is really domination by Cal Poly. Look at their offensive numbers, and look what their defense has done mm -hmm. to Montana's offense. Uh, Coach Walsh, I mean, he was good at halftime. He said, hey, there's 30 more minutes. He knows that you've got to finish this game, but he has to be happy right now what his team has turned in in this first half. Well, total yards clearly in favor of Cal Poly, but also look at time of possession, 18 and a half minutes for Cal Poly, just 11 for Montana. And after we talked about it, after that initial drive uh, by the Grizz, Cal Poly pretty much buckled up the chin strap and just dominated the first half. You're a coach. What do you change in this Montana locker room coming out? Uh, you know, I'm not sure exactly what they thought they could do against Cal Poly's defense, but obviously either Cal Poly made some adjustments different from what they had scouted all week or they're just playing one heck of a half. But you have got to find a way to sustain drives. That time of possession, 
Uh, you know that Cal Poly is going to do that if given the opportunity. So it's really up to Montana's offense to keep the ball, convert third downs, take their own time off the clock, and, and ultimately put points on the board. So, uh, man, again, I, I don't really blame the, the defense right now. It's, it's got to fall on the offense to get the job done. All right, let's take a look now at some of the first half highlights from a packed house here at Washington Grizzly Stadium in Missoula. And Montana benefited from the first turnover of the game, Grady, as they struck first, got the football, and this was the first fumble of the day. That was recovered by Montana, allowed them to keep the drive going. And then special teams as they get the block punt here, and that would lead to the first touchdown. Yeah, Herbert Gamboa comes off the edge and blocks it. Montana got into the end zone because of that. It's a big special teams play. All right, we'll have more first half highlights in a moment. But first, let's go down on the field and join Sean Rainey. 14 to 7. You can get the seven's kind of set up by the block punt. Offensively, not in the best of rhythm in the first half. How do you how do you think they played in the first half? Well, you know, we were very, very sporadic on, on offense. You know, you just, you can't get behind schedule on first down and then be forced to throw the ball, you know, and we, we've got to get back and run the football. You know, we can do that. We have to be able to do that when we do have a chance to make a play. We've got to make it because, you know, obviously this kind of an offense, you're not going to get a whole bunch of possessions, so you better, you know, you better take advantage of them and, and put points on the board when you do and that's what we've got to do we've got to be much much better and more proficient on offense and defensively we've got to tackle and get to the football and then a lot of Jordan Canada in the first half is Trayvon Van a little nicked up uh, Trayvon hurt an ankle I believe he's probably done for the day I, I'm not sure how bad but I, I know that he's done for today anyway so we'll have to get Joey going a little bit counts and, and John Wynn all right thanks coach back up to you guys well, Grady, we had wondered about the status of Trayvon Van. He just had the one carry in the first half. Now we know uh, he will not return in the second half. So that clearly puts more pressure on this Montana running game to try to get something going in the second half. Now, the good news for Montana when they did have a chance inside the 20-yard line, they did score in that first quarter. And uh, this was the fourth down conversion that set up the touchdown. Yeah, it was a big conversion, and then watch the run here by Canada. Again, seeing that north-south lane and getting it in the end zone. Well, the Mustangs answer and got some outstanding play from their quarterback, and Graves was simply sensational in the first half. Yeah, he really was. I mean, you're seeing everything that was advertised about that young guy. Man, he's tough, small in stature, but what a tough kid. What a competitor. He had a nice half throwing the ball as yeah. well, and there's a fullback who, man, Umo, Here's his touch second touchdown, but you saw what kind of receiver he is as well. So the perimeter players right now uh, doing a good job for Cal Poly. And then Jordan Johnson, his first interception of the season, and it came right here as they were trying to put together a drive. And Jordan Williams came away with it for the Mustangs, and that's pretty much where we stand here at halftime. Crowd beginning to file back in, and uh, obviously Grady adjustments are going to have to be made. Uh, but I don't know, you know, I, you talked about it. I mean, even when you shut them down on this triple option attack, it, it's a three and four yard gain almost every time. It is, and, and the thing that's scary about, about Cal Poly is, you know, they, uh, well, take a look at this defense first. I, I wanted to mention a couple of the players that were much heralded for Cal Poly have really shown up, and there's one of them right there, the middle linebacker, DeZubner. Man, has he had a phenomenal first half. He has been all over the field. And then again, here's that deep ball that that Jordan just under throws. But boy, I can't you can't say enough about Cal, Cal Poly's defense. And there's the defensive tackle we've talked a lot about. Mm -hmm. Sullivan Gross, he's a good player as well. I tell you, that's what you need is you need your big players. There's another great hit by DeZubner, but you need your big players in an atmosphere like this on the road in a hostile environment like Washington Grizzly. You need those guys, your leaders, your your talented guys to step up and play big. And Cal Poly's guys have done that today. Well, Cal Poly comes into this game at 2-0 in the Big Sky Conference. 3-3 three and three overall, but you also have to recognize that the Mustangs have played a couple of Division I schools earlier in the season. Uh, they lost at Fresno State, and Fresno State still undefeated. They also lost to Colorado State, another FBS school, as well as a loss to Yale. So in the Big Sky so far, they're 2-0. Now, if you're the Mustangs and you're a fan of the Mustangs, you got to be looking at this game right now and saying, let's not get ahead of ourselves. But right. if we can come into Missoula and steal a win and be at 3-0, and 
in the Big Sky Conference. That would be huge for them. And we look right now at the Big Sky, Montana State, Eastern Washington, Cal Poly, all 2-0. and And then you've got a whole bunch of teams that are sitting there with one loss. Well, and you said it, Chris, because the committee's going to look at that 3-3 three and three record, and they know that a couple of those losses are to Division I schools and an undefeated Yale, who's a very good team. So, man, if Cal Poly can get this one and continue doing what they're doing, man, they're putting themselves in great position. So we talked about at the Open, this is a playoff-type game. Man, both teams realize that. This should be a heck of a second half. And again, we'd like to welcome in our viewers watching on Fox 11 out in California today as we get set to go here in the second half and the Mustangs will receive. And this will be returnable right at the goal line. Ball was bobbled. Met right at the 20 yard line. So not much doing that time for Alex Hubbard who gives the Mustangs the ball right at the 20. Well, I tell you, you heard a lot about the middle of this Cal Poly defense from their defensive tackles to their middle back who we've talked a lot about and then even their, their safeties. And uh, man, they, those guys have done a nice job. 22 strong safety as a returner as well. Did you see the average per carry on those rushing stats? Two of them over six yards a pop, including Graves, the quarterback, and that man right there, Chris Dan Ivory, who falls ahead for a couple. Well, how big is this first possession for both teams? You know, it is really big because Cal Poly, if they can continue to do what they've done, yeah. man, they just continue to build their confidence and their momentum. And I was going to say, they start with the play that was really successful for them in the first half right away, coming out with that guard around. Just one side caving down, blocking down, and bringing the other guard around. They really ran it well in the first half. They start with it there. Second and eight, and this time the gain is up to the 27-yard line. And that's going to bring up third and four. Ivory again. Little trap play inside, bring the guard and just trap the defensive tackle. And again, you know, pretty good defense, but three and four yards a pop. Wagonman in on the stop on third and four. Third down numbers, look at that for the Mustangs, 60% today on six of 10. And this is a big one coming up here on third and four from the 27, Graves flips it out. And that's gonna be a first down up to the 33 yard line. And again, Chris Stan Ivory doing some good work after the catch. Yeah, and once again, watch the cut blocking. You see guys just, man, you, you don't get to see the blocks, but you see two Cal Poly guys down, prone on the on the, on the the ground. They've just um, executed cut blocks. It's, again, it's a tough thing to practice. It's a tough thing to simulate during the week. They just do an outstanding job with their cut blocks all over the field, but really on the perimeter as well. First down for Cal Poly, just underway third quarter. 14 to seven lead over the Grizz. Put a man in motion, and this time, not much doing up into the middle as Umo gets maybe one on the play. Well, Coach Gregorak talked about Veneman was in on this tackle right here. And, oh, do you and see him shed his block yeah, there? Yeah, exactly. I mean, he said that as far as playing off those cut blocks, this is a perfect game for Veneman because he is so athletic. Even as a big defensive tackle, able to just shed that block, and you saw it right there. Nice play by Alex. Second and nine from the 34. Here's Graves on a rollout. Looking, now fires out there, has a man at the 47-yard line. And yeah, they're gonna give him the catch. That was a great catch by Jordan Hines, their sophomore wide receiver from Chula Vista, California. Little play action, watch Graves in the face of pressure. Nice throw on the run, and look at these hands. That is good coverage right there, but the strong hand to go up. Boy, Daniel Graves is playing an outstanding football <laughs> game, isn't he? Yep, and he took another shot at the end of that play. 47 plays of offense so far. That's almost double Montana. <laughs> and that time, Wagaman says, I don't think so. Boy, it's a good, it's a good read. Yeah. He's just going to read that defensive end. He pulls the ball because of it, but Wagaman does play off of it and make the play. And again, a good play, but a three-yard gain. You know, those three Montana linebackers all rank in the top 30 at Montana in both tackles and tackles for loss. So you know that they are being tested today. And a flag comes down. And Graves, kind of a broken play. And the flag thrown right at the line of scrimmage. That usually in the area of holding. 
Looks like the Lions judge is signaling offside. Montana, yeah. Montana, yeah. Big play. Mm. Offside, 92 defense lined up in the neutral zone, five yards. We play second down. Wow, that's tough because that uh, broken play would have put Cal Poly in a tough situation, but as it stands, they have a second and two from right at midfield. Oh, this is by far the scariest down against this offense. Mm -hmm. Second and short because you could see anything. And they like to have you in this situation, of course, and run some type of a run fake and then get you deep with one of their receivers. Just the second penalty for Montana. Here's Graves. Pulls it down. Got running room and a first down to the 40. Graves on his feet to the 30. And a first down for Dano Graves. And just shows you how dangerous he can be. Drop back, looking, couldn't find anyone, and then a straight ahead run for a first down. I tell you, this kid is special. I mean, you you just you can't, you just have to love watching a kid like this that's just tough and a competitor. He's a leader. I like his reactions after every play like this. He gets up, calling his guys on to keep rolling. Ivory takes the deep pitch, doesn't get much on the play, but yeah, I say I say that. And it's a four-yard game, yeah. so. Yep, that's the thing. They're just working their offense. This is the rhythm they want. They are, right now, they are in rhythm. And that's what, when you talk about an offense being in rhythm, this is it. They're running their stuff. They're mixing it up. They feel like every time they carry it. And look at this. As yep. a quarterback, 12 carries, 80 yards. Man, he's having a sensational game. A lot of offense from their quarterback today. And Ivory, this time, has met at the line of scrimmage. He'll go down at the 25, and that'll bring up third and three. Ten and a half to go third quarter. And Coach Delaney talked about it. He said, we're not going to get the football a whole lot of times today. So when we do, we've got to be able to take advantage. And look at this drive to start the third quarter by well, the Mustangs. I, I, I got to do this, Chris. I didn't think I was going to try it. But right guard number 52, Latui Asanoa, has been pulling all game long. I think I said it right. I, <laughs> man, I tell you, I took a risk there. but You did. Man, he's been doing a great job on that play of wrapping around and leading his backs up in there. And again, that's been their most successful play all day. Here we go on third down. Graves with the pitch. Ivory to the 25. Late flag coming in at the 20. Now, that's going to be enough for the first down, but let's see where the flag is. Thrown from the back judge, it looks like going to be holding. I guess the field judge, he tossed it in from deep out there on the sideline. So he probably saw some holding on the edge by either the tackle or maybe one of the wing backs. All the way. Offense number 19. 15 yards. Mm. With the third down. That's a huge penalty against Cal Poly. 15 yards back the other way and negates what would have been a first down. Well, and as much as they cut. You know, there's another cut block. You saw it right on the edge of your screen. John Cannon got to got called for it, but as much as they cut, it's it, it gets tough to know that gray area of what's an illegal cut block and what's a legal cut block. So now instead of a first down, they've got third and 17 from the 38-yard line. Here comes pressure up the middle, and it works. Boy, did they read that play. Great run stop up the middle, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, I think Cal Poly thought they were going to catch him off guard and just run a little trap play, thinking on third and long they were going to play more of the pass or something on the perimeter. But Cal Poly tried to catch him by surprise with a quick trap, and Montana had nothing to do with it right there to make the stop. So that'll force the punt. He angles it for the right side. Henderson will let this one hit. Oh, boy, look at this. Going to be down inside the five-yard line. So the Mustangs playing great field position here as the Grizz start their first possession of the third quarter from inside the five. Montana with the football in a 14 to seven game. They have it for the first time in the second half with 8.59 to go. We talked about controlling the clock and Cal Poly Although they didn't score a point on that drive, they took six minutes off the game clock. Yeah, just what they want to do. If they're not going to get points, make sure. Look at that now. More than double yep. the time of possession. And once again, the Grizz have only given up 14 points, so you, you've got to be okay, happy with your defense. But it right now is up to this Montana offense. They've got to go 96 yards against a defense that has really given them fit so far in the first half. Johnson up under center on first down and 
the give is to Canada, trying to give Montana some operating room, and he picks up one, and that's all. Oh, a nice job by the defensive tackle inside. I think, not sure if it was gross or not, but watch on the left side of your screen. He's just going to spin off, stay with it, and get in on the play. And a nice job of playing defensive line. He got double teamed initially, but he fought off, spun around, got back in the hole, and made a play for minimal gain, one yard. You know, they give him two on the play, so second and eight. Clock running, 8.20 to go, third quarter. Yeah, oh, this is going to be a false start on Jordan Johnson, right? Yeah, and you know, as good as he has played all year long, he's just seemed to be just a little bit out of rhythm. That time, everybody knew it was on two. Offense, number 10, half the distance, second down. Except Jordan. And that might be one of the most embarrassing quarterback <laughs> mistakes you can make <laughs> to call the play on two, and everybody hangs in there except you. Oops. Oops. <laughs> yeah. You see the numbers for Jordan Johnson. That's that's tough. Four of twelve for thirty-two yards in the pick, and they'll stay on the ground. Boy, and there just isn't any running lanes at all. Canada tried to get up over the right side. And number 41, boy, he's having a career afternoon. He is. I mean, he is second in the big sky in, in tackles. Yeah. He's, he's right there. And I tell you what, if, if I had to vote for the all-conference team right now just after watching this, I, I can see why he's going to get some first-team votes. He's a good middle linebacker. He sure is. Entered the day with 61 total tackles, 30 solo tackles, and he's going to have a whole lot more when he leaves Missoula this afternoon. Third and nine now from the five-yard line. And Canada again with the carry. And Montana playing it safe. A three and out will have to punt it away. Well, not, not only uh, three and out, Chris, but, boy, three. I, I know they had the little penalty in there, but yeah. three runs for nothing. You know, just one yard, two yards, zero yards. I mean, that's it, and the punt team comes out. I tell you what, fans booing a little bit already, yeah. but uh, boy, just nothing going there deep in their own end. So the Grizz forced to punt this one away. That's a good high kick by Shaw. Bounces at the 45. And out of bounds at the 47. So the Mustangs with the lead and the football when we come back, 6.39 to go after these words from your local stations. Since night. And Brady, uh, what an outstanding effort this afternoon from quarterback Dan O'Graves for Cal Poly. And only his second yeah. start, the transfer from Air Force is just lighting up the Grizzlies, both with his feet and with his arm. Just playing so well today, playing confident, being a leader, and he's got the football again. Oh, wow, what a hit out there in the flat. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody loves a big hit, right? Nate Harris, maybe that's the play that Montana needs to get started. Listen to this replay, folks, right here. Oh, pow. I'll tell you what, both teams have really been bringing the pads today. This has been a physical game. There's been some great hits. But again, maybe Nate Harris just got Montana started. Fans are starting to get back yeah. into it after that. Loss of three, second and 13 from the 45. Here's Graves on the pitch. Ivory leaps forward to the 49 just inside Montana territory. And that's going to bring up third and long for the first time in a long while. Well, I, I talked about the athleticism of Alex Benham in the defensive tackle. Watch this. All the way down the line for the big guy making the play on the edge. That is good speed and good hustle by a defensive tackle. Third and seven. Clock continues to run. We're already down to five and a half in the third. Fans are in it for the first time in a long while. Graves fires knocked down at the line of scrimmage. Big so Montana. play by Caleb Kidder. Sorry, Chris. Nope. Caleb Kidder comes on the twist. There's an end tackle twist. Number 44, watch. Defensive tackle is going to work to the outside. Get his hands up and bat it down. And that is a big play. Ned Harris got him ignited. Caleb Kidder, uh, Kidder finishes it off. And if you can't fire your crowd up with 
great offense, do it with great defense. Absolutely. And this kick again comes down. And Henderson to the 10. Boy, have they done a great job of field position as Montana will start again deep in their own end from the 10 yard line when we come back. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Allegiance, your benefits at work. Montana Ford, drive one at your Montana Ford store. CompareFord.com. Billings Hotel and Convention Center, the one with the water slides. And by Tirerama, more than just a tire store. First down for Montana at the 10 yard line. They stay on the ground at Canada. It tries to stretch to the outside, but again, Great contain on the outside. It's just been tough to run wide on this Mustang defense. Let's go down on the field for a Honda sideline report and Sean Rainey. Yeah, guys, I was down by the Cal Poly bench over here, and their defense is one confident group right now. When they got that last three and out, all the coaches, offensive guys, went up to the defensive line and started patting them on the head because they're really eating up those blocks and letting those linebackers come in and make plays like they've been doing all day, guys. 4.40 to go in the third, just the second possession of the second half for Montana. This time Johnson, little play action, is going to throw it out here. And this is caught by Jones. Whoa, what a big play for Montana just when they needed it. And Jamal Jones comes down with it at midfield. Well, during the break, Chris, you and I just talked about they needed something to get them out of that end zone. It seems like for the last 45 minutes, the game has been played down inside the 5 or 10 yard line. Finally, the Grizz come up with a play to get them out of the shadow of their own end zone. Jamal Jones talked about how wanted to get him more involved. He's a big play guy, great route, great catch, and Jordan Johnson delivered it. That was huge for Montana. Pearson goes in motion now out of the eye. Johnson looks, going deep again. And contact, and there's going to be pass interference. Definitely holding on the perimeter out there. The corner had him wrapped up, Jamal Jones. And I tell you what, when you look at the height advantage, Jamal Jones about 6'2", 6 6'3". 6 mm -hmm. And Smith Johnson, the corner, is only 5'9". So I've been wondering if, if Montana's not thinking about somehow trying to take advantage of that, throw that deep ball just like that, and try to give a shot. Interference, 26 defense, 15 yards, first down. Well, Jones was literally stopped on his route. I mean, he just physically had him stopped on the route. So this will be another big play for Montana. We'll be able to see a little play action roll out here. And again, taking a shot. Look at the huge size advantage, but just totally has him bottled up. And Jones gets the call. Grizzlies in business, finally. Last five drives for Montana. Four punts and an interception. So first and 10 from the 35 out of the eye. Canada ducks up inside. And boy, he pays a price every time he carries the football. He's going to be one sore kid tomorrow. They'll give him two on the play, second and eight. I talked about Hubbard, the safety play, Hubbard and Williams. Williams has the first pick of the year. Look at number 22, Hubbard. Those safeties, again, up the middle of this defense. They fill well. They, the interception earlier by number three, Williams, and there's 22, the strong safety filling. He's also returned punts and kicks. Good football players, both of those safeties. And they're physical too, aren't they? I mean, they come up and really engage you. Second and eight from the 33. Canada got some running room inside the 30 to the 25. And Jordan Canada gives Montana first down at the 23-yard line. Well, you talk about being patient with your offense and sticking with it. We've talked about how Cal Poly has done it all day. And now Montana, they've stuck with it. They're being patient with this running game. Not a lot going. Credit Cal Poly, but here goes Montana. Finally getting something going with Jordan Canada on the edge. Cam Warren in the lineup now for Montana. He's split wide to the right. Jones and Henderson split left on first down. Now they're going to shift Pearson. Johnson. Looks, got plenty of time now, rolls right, has got some running room, fires it out there, incomplete, and a tippy-toe catch on the sideline. What a great job by Cam Warren to stay in bounds. Well, first of all, nice job by Jordan Johnson of escaping, again, decisions. He looks left, he's got two good receivers on the left, but they're well covered, so he escapes to the right, and on the run, look Whoa, at that delivery. Oh, man, was that any and good. A nice job by Cam Warren, <laughs> tiptoeing, good foot action on the sideline. Hey. 
Second and one, gain of nine from the 14. Johnson rolls left this time. Now throws in and out of the hands of Jones. In the end zone, had a chance, but unable to bring it down. Good call on second and short, right? Yeah, really good call. And they've run this twice now where they give the cross action a play fake, a, a, a totally different play action look because he's really not even faking to the back, but all the action going away. And boy, Jordan was just a little wide. Watch him see mm -hmm. it. He knows he missed one there. He had him. Such a tough throw, though, again, that yes. you, ro you know, you're rolling and you got to throw it back across your body like that. So third and one. Let's see what they dial up here. The ball on the 14 yard line. Jamal Wilson as a lead blocker will definitely be a factor, but I think Canada tried to go to the outside too oh, quickly. Man. And did he take a chance? He wanted to stay with the play to fight for the first down. Looked like he might have been tripped up. This just all depends on where they mark it. Watch this now and see if he shoot it. No, I tell you, DeZubner fills it again. Man, what a good middle linebacker. He stepped in there and he filled that so well and did not allow Canada to take the gap that he wanted forced him to the outside, and then his teammates stepped up, strung it out. Man, that is good defense by Cal Poly. Here we go, fourth and one. Grizzle roll the dice, trailing by a touchdown. Give is to Canada, tries to bounce outside, and he's taken down. Boy, that was a sensational play by Antko. Makes an open field tackle, and once again, the Mustangs turn Montana away. And I'm kind of surprised the first time they had fourth and short, Chris, in the first half on that first drive, they went straight ahead at Cal Poly, just size over size and, and won it. This time they try to go around the edge, and Cal Poly makes a great play and turns them away. What a big defensive stand. You know, I love offensive fireworks like anybody, Grady, but I got to tell you, this is one of the best games I've ever watched with two teams just slugging each other. Absolutely. Back and it, forth. Yeah, it has been a war. I mean, from, from the get-go, both teams came out physical, smacking each other. And as you mentioned, we know Jordan Canada is going to be sore, but I think there's going to be a lot of these players that are looking for the ice bath when this one's over. <laughs> oh, yeah. So now it goes back to the Montana defense. And take a look at the last five drives for the Mustangs. Missed field goal, three punts, but they did get the one touchdown. Minute 36 to go here in the third. Oh, that's a flag, going to be a false start on Ivory. That'll back him up five yards. Well, this is where the Montana fans come false into play. Start. Offense number eight, five yards, remains first down. I've called a lot of games here, Chris, over the years, and, and uh, I've always talked about somehow keeping track of how many false starts especially in the end of the North Crazies. Yeah, I, I can't imagine how many honestly false starts that they really you could probably give them credit for. They know when to make noise and they're doing it now. True home field advantage when you're down there for sure. First and 14 balls back to the 12 yard line and now Graves switching the play up under center. They all nothing doing this time talked about stopping the fullback well how had nowhere to go well look at this adjustment pre-snap if you can see it now oh just a little bit late on the replay but Ooh. I'll tell you what Jordan Tripp the linebacker came up and moved Benham in a gap from the B gap to the A gap on the snap Benham slides into that A gap and makes a big play so a good adjustment by Jordan Tripp there telling his D lineman which gap to go second and 12 crowd back into it again it is deafening here at Washington Grizzly Stadium right now. Inside a minute to go here in the third quarter. Graves out of the gun, looks, fires, caught at the 15, and then brought down just over the 20-yard line. It's not a big gainer, but it gives them some working room as Cole Stanford makes the catch, and it's third down. Well, nice job of just getting it out of the mess there, getting it out in the quick screen, <laughs> and Cannon got the sure tackler, misses one there. Another big third down for the yep. Grizzly defense. They turned him away last time. Can they do it again? Third and six from the 22. Graves. Oh, almost intercepted at the 20-yard line. 
Well, I'll tell you this, Chris, from firsthand experience, I have, I have had Caleb Kidder do this to me many times. <laughs> He'll jump up, he reads it so well, jump up and pick that screen off or knock it down. Again, great recognition by a great football player, Caleb Kidder, and now finally the field position has He's changed. Flip. Nice kick, drives Henderson back to the 35-yard line. He's met right there, but again, much better field position for Montana as they'll start this drive from just inside the 35 with eight seconds to go here in the third. Yeah, bad news for Montana is this quarter is over and they have nothing to show for it. Two possessions. Yeah, two possessions is all they got. They did flip field position yep. finally, but they're going to go into the fourth quarter no better off on the scoreboard. Well, two possessions, and one of those was a three and out. So, right. uh, yeah, it's uh, possessions few and far between since the first quarter. They have it at the 34. On the last drive, Johnson's number's much better, three for three and 47 yards. Here's Johnson. Looks, now throws out here, and that's complete right at the 40-yard line, and that's going to take us to the end of the third quarter. And that was the fullback, Wilson who brings in the catch, uh, he is a big fella. That takes us to the end of the third, 14-7. That score remains from halftime. Back with the fourth after these words from your local stations. Fourth quarter, you see a lot of the Grizz players holding up the four fingers. And the fourth quarter wasn't actually too friendly for the Grizz last year. But this year, Coach Mick Delaney said he wanted stressing on finishing games, and they've actually outscored their opponents 45 to 13 in the fourth quarter this season. Chris. Thank you, Sean. And they will need all of that this afternoon, Grady, if they want to get a win here. They've got the ball now, second and four from the 40 yard line. Johnson, play action, looks, looks, fires. Got a man in the flat. That's Canada, first down. Slips and falls right at midfield, but a first down for Montana. Well, and you know something, Chris, that has not had to happen yet this year is they haven't had to turn a game over to Jordan Johnson yet, and we know he's capable of it. But the running game has been solid all year. Nobody's really bottled it up. Well, Cal Poly's done a great job, and it may be time for Jordan Johnson to kind of take a game over a little bit and for Coach Delaney to put it in his hands. Well, and he did a great job that time as he went to his check down receiver after surveying the field. So first down, Canada whacked, falls forward, gain of three, second and seven. And it's worth noting what kind of team they're playing. This is a quality football team they're playing. Of course, the Mustangs shared the Big Sky Conference title a year ago. Nice hit, there's our Man, guy, right? There's our guy, I tell you, I, I wonder sometimes what it's like post game when these guys go through and shake hands. I tell you, when, when two players like DeZubner in Canada have just- <laughs> I'd run away know, from him. Knocked, knocked heads <laughs> over and over again. It would hurt to shake Whew. his hand. Gain of four, second and six. Canada. Tries to bounce outside, and he is good. Well, keeps going. Woo. I, well, I tell you, the pads are popping down there. That time, helmets are flying. DeZubnar wow. got his hand on him again, slowed him down, and then the Mustang's able to clean it up. Yeah, watch the left of your screen. Here he comes, DeZubnar, yep. the backer again. Bam, forced him to the outside, and then here comes the last hit by the safety, Hubbard. Wow. Here comes Williams. The first safety gets a shot on him. Now watch Hubbard. Boom! There goes the helmet. <laughs> oh man, I am impressed with this Cal Poly defense. Oh, and I mean, this has been that's been routine yeah. all day. Th that kind of hitting both sides of the football. Third and eight from the 48. Johnson looks long, and this one intended for Jones. And Jones, yes, they give him the catch at the six-yard line. Wow, what a catch! Well, there's the big play ability that they talked about before the game, getting Jones more involved. Now watch, he's got a size advantage. Fantastic job now of using his body, just like a basketball player. That's a great play with great coverage by the defender, but he just uses his body to shield it, goes up high point, uses his 6'3 frame, squeezes it with both, both hands, and the Grizz are in business. Montana. Knocking on the door, first and goal from the eight. 13 minutes to go in the fourth. Johnson looks back at the end zone for Henderson and just, just overthrown. Good coverage, too. It was good coverage. Again, Jordan's got a size matchup. 
Henderson's not as big, six foot, but again, you're talking five nine over there is the corner. So just get it up a little bit, let your receiver make a play, threw it a little bit, a little bit too much heat on it. Again, Grizz down by seven. You can still, I mean, you could settle for three here because, I mean, one score ties it, two scores could put you in right. the lead, but obviously Coach Delaney wants a touchdown. Counts in the backfield for Montana now on second and eight. Nakarado, they bring him across. Johnson, and this one is caught by Cam Warren. And Warren out of bounds, where are they gonna mark it? Just outside the one yard line. Well, the one thing you'll know about Cam Warren is he is one of the best route runners on this team. He may not have the size or the speed, but he runs excellent, excellent routes. Jordan's, Jordan's thinking that maybe <laughs> yeah. Cam tipped that, uh, the pylon there. He reached for it. He tried yeah. to get the pylon, but just missed it. Good spot. Here we go, third down. Yard away. Johnson ducks out of one tackle, stretches for the end zone, now fumbles the football. I tell you, this is yeah. a big play. They're calling yep. touchback. Touchback Cal comes up with it. Oh my goodness, yeah, oh boy. Chris. There's that same misdirectional play. And I tell you, if you're young guys at home, a lot of guys do this. They've gotten in the habit of trying to extend that ball. You see it all the time in the NFL. And oh my goodness, sometimes if it comes out as you extend it, that's what can happen. A touchback, 20 yard line. Cal Poly two times in a row down in the red zone turns Montana away and look as Jordan tries to extend he loses the football watch he'll extend right there, right there yep and there's our guy Chris the Zubner once again is the one who forced the fumble look at it right there lays a lick on Jordan Johnson forces the fumble he has had a fantastic game and maybe no play bigger than that one yeah. right there Football recovered in the end zone, so it comes out to the 20. First down. Ivory. Straight ahead run, second and two. And in the back half of this, this football game, Grady, Montana has done a much better job on first down. They have. They definitely have. Those last two yeah. drives have been have been very good. They finally put something together. Unfortunately, it's a little bit deflating. You finally get two good drives going, and you come up empty twice in a row in the red zone. But the Grizz defense now is still playing well. They've had some good series. They've just got to keep it going and turn them away again. Give them three on the play, so second and seven. And Ivory falls ahead to the 30, to the 32, and that's a first down. And this is the point in the game when you have the kind of offense that Cal Poly does, it plays right into your hand. It, it does, absolutely. And you, you see that, man, it looked like the Grizz kind of had it bottled up, but well, they just stay with it. They do such a good job at the point of attack, and Ivory just keeps his, his feet churning and is able to turn something into a, a nothing into something good. First down carry to the 32. Ivory with the deep pitch up over the 35 to the 40. Down to the 41-yard line, brings up second and short. Well, I guarantee you, John Canangata is going to be tired of this. I don't know if you'll see it. Boom, right there on the edge of your screen. You see him get cut again. I bet, I think John has probably gotten cut like that 10 to 15 times today. Oh, my goodness, that's just one of those blocks you get tired of seeing. Ivory lips off to the sideline, but not before he gets eight yards on the play. Second and two. And they run it up inside, and that is a first down carry from their fullback, Umo, who's been pretty quiet here in the second half, but that time gives the Mustangs a first down. Yeah, they haven't really gone to him as much, and the Grizz have done a nice job on that dive play, but Umo was a big factor in the first half for sure. Better than five yards a carry for the Mustangs today. About half of that for the Grizz. Flags fly. Three of them on the field, and this one's going to come back. Well, Cal Poly, they're going with their Canadian version of the triple option, yeah. bringing multiple guys in motion. Unfortunately, that doesn't work down here. Five yards. We play first down. Next thing you know, they'll put their receivers in motion. <laughs> we run them right at the line of scrimmage, right? <laughs> Ten thousand. 
Now, last time the Grizz did get a stop with a penalty. You see both slot backs are both wings coming in motion at the same time. Obviously illegal, two guys in motion. But the Grizz used a penalty two drives ago to stop Cal Poly. Can they use this one to get another stop? Six for 65 in the penalty department, and another flag comes down. Same thing, Chris. Yep, same, same thing. So that's going to back the Mustangs up five more yards, and it'll be first and 20. Offense, five yards, remains first down. Yeah. Coach, I don't think Coach Walsh is real thrilled right now. Coach Walsh, who as a head coach does not wear a headset, he is uh, tromping up and down on the sidelines, questioning his, his offensive staff. But obviously one of the wingbacks is getting confused and coming in motion the other way. And you see Coach Walsh right there. Again, he was questioning his offensive staff, like, what are we doing out there, boys? So the Mustangs going backwards, first and 20 from the 35, but again, clock now beginning to become a factor with 10 minutes, still plenty of time, 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. But you just wonder how many more possessions Montana's going to get in this game. Uh, timeout taken by Cal Poly. Boy, this is an ugly sequence. It is for them. And did they get the timeout before the delay game? It looks like they did, or they would have had three straight penalties. 9.51 to go in the fourth. Mustangs continue to lead by a touchdown. First and 20 after back-to-back -back penalties by the Mustangs from the 35. 9.51 to go in the fourth. Dano Graves, remember that name. He's going to be around for a while in the Big Sky Conference, and he's very comfortable in this offense as a transfer from Air Force. Yes, he is. You can tell he has a lot of experience back from his high school days in Folsom, California, to the University of, or to the Air Force, I'm sorry, and now here. He's got a lot of reps in this offense, and he is very good at it. Graves fires it out there to Stanford, and that's complete. Now, ball's on the ground. And recovered by Montana. Now, there's a flag on the play right at the 45-yard line. So we're going to have to wait and see how they sort all of this out. I can't. First of all, I, I'm shocked they're calling this a fumble. I thought it was because of the ground. I thought the ground popped it out. I was shocked that we didn't get a down-by-contact call, but they let it play on. I think the penalty is going to be one of the Grizzlies smartly actually tried to keep it in bounds, mm -hmm. and they're probably going to call that, but that was a good play to keep it in bounds so that the Grizz could recover. Well, Jordan Tripp wound up with the football at the end of the play. This would be a huge play if they actually yeah. let, let the ball be turned over. What a big turnover. Well, right now, the ball's resting at the 35-yard line. There is no flag on the play. There is a fumble recovered by Montana. Wow. How big is this? Well, this is one of those that I am certain they would overturn, obviously, at the, the, the F, FBS level. And the NFL level, he's yeah. definitely down. But the Grizz obviously are going to take it. Again, I'm not sure what the flag was, but watch. He's just reaching out. He's yep. down. In fact, I think the ball came out as it hit the ground even. You don't see it there, but wow. Shocking turn of events. The Grizz are going to take it for sure. Can they get this one in? First down from the 35. Johnson throws it out to his safety valve. And Jordan Canada did a nice job just to get a couple of yards out of the play. They had it bottled up nicely. Still picks up two. Boy, they did. You talk about a safety valve, and man, that, that safety valve was not very safe. Mm -hmm. They were all over it. Canada had to make a great play just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good coverage. Once again, downfield by Cal Poly. Their secondary has done a nice job today covering these wide receivers for Montana. Second and eight from the 33. Nine minutes to go in the fourth quarter. Here's Johnson. Fires out here, complete to Cam Warren. He makes the catch at the 30. They're going to mark him at the 28-yard line. So he'll be three yards short of the first down. Good tackle by Antko. We haven't called his name a lot, but, man, these linebackers for Cal Poly are so good. Obviously, we've talked about their Mike linebacker, but here's their Sam linebacker getting in on it, making a good tackle, and third and three. All right, so third down for Montana, three to go, ball at the 28. 
Three receivers set to the left. Nakarado out here to the right along with Henderson. Johnson looks left, pressure up the middle, now throws it up, incomplete. And another flag comes down. And this could be another costly penalty against the Mustangs. I tell you what, Cal Poly dialed up the pressure right there, coming with cover zero, all-out blitz. They're going to bring both backers, lots of pressure on Jordan in his face. He delivers the ball early. Good job of getting rid of it and not taking a sack right there. That would have been the worst possible thing he could have done. It would have taken him out of field goal range, potentially, and, and not allowed him a fourth down chance. Pass is ruled uncatchable. Ooh. There is no foul on the play. Fourth down. Well, this is going to be interesting now because the Grizz in field goal range. We'll see what they do. Well, guess who? Mm -hmm. Wow. Oh, boy. Probably good to let that play on. Well, they're going to go on fourth and three. And now a timeout taken by Montana. And we'll step aside as well. We're back after these words from your local stations. All right, let's go down for a Honda sideline report and Sean Rainey. And with that last fumble recovery, that made it nine in the career for Jordan Tripp, which ties the stool, a school record. None more timely than that, guys. Thank you, Sean. Fourth and three for Montana. They will go. They opt not to try for the field goal here. Here's Johnson. Straight drop. Looks. Fires across the middle. In and out. Incomplete pass. And another big stop for the Mustangs. And that was just blanket coverage. No chance at all to make that reception. Well, there's a lot of defensive players for Cal Poly that could get player of the game today, but Alex Hubbard has to be in the discussion as yep. well. From his safety position, just tried to run a little pick play, run Cam Warren across the field, and Hubbard is all over it. Makes a great play, breaks on the ball, knocks it away, and again, he has had an outstanding game from his safety position. And again now, the pressure squarely on the backs of the Montana defense. 8-11 to go in the fourth quarter. Little pitch to Ivory who finds the corner and now up over the 40, all the way down to the 45-yard line in a first down. Chris Stan Ivory with a great run. Well, if you can see it on the perimeter again, folks, watch poor Jan, John Canangata. Boom, cut yep. down by the slot back once again. Such an effective block, strategy, technique. Cut down that outside linebacker and the outside up the sideline is wide open. Great job of blocking by these wingbacks all day. Injured Montana player down on the field. So injury timeout on the field. We'll step aside as well with 8.04 to go here in the fourth. This broadcast is brought to you in part by Payne West Insurance. Clients, colleagues, community. Montana Honda Association. Visit your local Honda dealer. And by Blackfoot Telecommunications Group, the region's business technology leader. Mustangs have the football, they have the lead, they have a first down from the 45-yard line. And that play strung out nicely by the Montana defense. Chris Nichols in on the carry. Well, that time, Cannon got to, was able to play off the block better. Yep. There, <coughs> excuse me, there was not a cut block that time. An attempt, it was going to be another one, but that time he got in better position and avoided the cut block and made a good play. Gain of just two on the play, so second and eight from the 47. Graves lines up under center. Ivory falls down, so Graves has to keep it. And he's going to be slammed to the turf at the 48-yard line. And you just have to love the toughness of this little guy, don't you? Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you what, he you see a lot of quarterbacks, and obviously this is the offense, but I mean, look, he's so small in stature that with all those big guys, I mean, he gets banged around hard. I mean, his body is flying on contact, but tell you what, he bounces back up and runs the next play. Third and two from the 47. 
They go inside to Umo, and he's going to fall forward and get the first down to the 44. So a huge third down conversion for Cal Poly. That'll move the chains. Clock continues to run. Here comes Latui Asanoa again. I've said it twice now, Chris. I, yeah. Wow, I'm, 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 I'm happy there. But, That's why uh, you're the best colored man in the business. <laughs> <laughs> but once again, the all-conference guard pulling around the edge and leading up into the hole. It's been a play that's worked effectively for Cal Poly all day long, and they go to it once again on a third and short and get the first down. Ball is on the 44-yard line of Montana. Clock continues to run down to 630. Graves keeps the football, falls forward, down to the 37. The thing that's so impressive about Graves, as small as he is, is watch how he finishes the runs. I mean, watch here. He'll just launch his body into both linebackers. Look, he's going to keep it. And then, oh, yep. I mean, he's just attacking people. So whether he's 5'7", five, 5'8", five, I mean, whatever, whatever size he really is. Look at this. Talk about courage. I mean, this young man plays the game. What heart. Well, he's certainly given Cal Poly a spark on offense. Jordan Tripp shaking up on the play, and he's telling everyone he's fine. Well, and as you mentioned, Chris, I mean, keep keep track of this young man's name because he's only a sophomore, and mm -hmm. uh, he's going to make a lot of noise in the big sky over the next, well, two and a half years now. But this kid is good. Second start is all today, and we've seen a lot of quarterbacks come into the confines of Washington Grizzly Stadium and really struggle early on in their careers. But he has come in today and just put up a gem. So Tripp will have to come out, and we'll see what the evaluation is on him. And here's what happened right at the end of the play. Oh, yeah. Get hit by his own man. Yeah, happens a lot on defense when those guys come in and tackle the football and swarm the football. A lot of times they end up taking each other out. And with all the attention being paid to head injuries, they'll take a good look at him. And look at the numbers rushing the football, 297 for Cal Poly, just 64 for Montana, and that was coming off a big game against UC Davis last week. Well, the 297 is not really that surprising, no. but I'll tell you, the 64, I, what a game plan and an executed game plan defensively by Cal Poly. Howe drives forward in the first down to the 29-yard line. Well, well the you, very least, Grady, what Cal Poly would like to do is they get down in there, pretty much run out the clock and kick a field goal. Yeah, that's more than enough. Yeah, make it two scores. Yeah, but two score game. I tell you what, you wonder now. The Grizzly defense has given their offense chances the last three times. They have, they've turned it over and given their offense a chance. Unfortunately, the offense has gone down three straight times and got nothing out of it. You wonder if it's it's a little too late can yeah. the grizzly defense do it four times well and as coach delaney said you're not going to get that many opportunities against this team so they'll give it to Howe, and again man that's some tough yardage but he gets six on the play second and four well we t i said in the open that you know yeah ivory's got the flashy numbers he's leading the big sky conference in rushing 114 but again think about how many guys have touched the ball oh, i mean six seven running yeah, backs six seven or eight different guys carry the ball and they all carry it very effectively and i mean you're seeing just really good execution all day long and only 14 points to show for it so yeah. again the grizzly defense has played well. well this has been an outstanding second half if you like defensive football Second and four now after the six-yard gain. How? Oh, and he's hit hard, falls forward. Spot of the football, though in forward progress is going to be to the 23, and that's going to be another first down. Now you mentioned it, run out the clock, and right now they're just going with the straight-ahead dive, giving it to the fullback. Watch out how Howe keeps his, his uh, feet going. That's the key with any running back finishing a run. Don't stop your feet. Keep driving ahead. Another first down for Cal Poly, and more importantly, the clock is ticking now down to the four-minute mark left in this football game. And the Mustangs well in range, in field goal range now with the ball at the 17-yard line. So first down inside four minutes to go. Cal slides off the right side of that offensive line. And another big gainer. Guess who they're following, folks? Watch, yeah. watch the right guard, number 52. Here he comes once again. They've just gone to this play time and time again. Just a down block, bring the guard around. Tough scheme, down, down, guard around. Just tough to stop. Well executed. Five-yard gain, second and five. 
But now Montana's going to need something big to happen for them to get back into this game. They need the football and need it, desperately need a stop. Second and five from the 12. Graves, pitch, and Ivory is met right at the 12-yard line. Good open field tackle by Hermanson. Yeah, good to see Matt back in there. Glad he's not hurt. I'll tell you the story on this play. Watch the catch. Ooh, yep. low pitch. Ivory picks it up off the turf. And a great fill by Hermanson to hold him to just a yard. Third and five. Huge play. Well, let's see if they don't run something right there to the middle of the field to set up their field goal kicker. The ball's at the 12. They need five for the first down as we're under three minutes to go here in the fourth. And how? Met at the 10 yard line, falls forward, slam back. He's going to be short of the first down. But again, the gain is inside the 10 yard line. And this is going to be a chip shot field goal attempt coming up. Well, that's the play that I thought they'd go to that same. That time you see, though, Latui Asanoa fell down. And probably the reason they didn't get the first down is because he tripped himself up and was not able to lead as he has been all game and allowed the Grizzly defenders to fill effectively. But as you said, Chris, it's in the middle of the field and with only 2.20 left. A field goal here really makes it tough for the Grizzlies. Comeback chance. Oh, yeah. They burn a timeout here. They have just one remaining. And we will step aside back with the final 2.22 in Missoula. Bobby Zalad has this one lined up. Spot of the ball at the 15-yard line. This will be 25 yards straight away for a field goal and a two-possession lead with 2.22 to go in the fourth. Kick on the way, oh. it's blocked! Blocked by Montana! Oh. Wow! <laughs> I mean, you want to say, obviously, it's 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 obvious, but the Grizz have to block that kick if they want any chance. What a huge play. Two blocked kicks on the day. The special teams of Montana come up monstrous in a huge situation. Wow, see if we can see the replay to see who actually blocked it. But, oh, my goodness, off of the right side. Got great penetration off the right side. I don't know if it'll be possible to tell what number, but what a tremendous effort. And now let's see if Jordan Johnson can become a hero. Well, it all comes down to this. Montana is 88 yards away from potentially tying this game. 2.17 to go in the fourth. They've got a first down and one timeout remaining. Canada, great catch up over the 20 to the 25 and a first down. Now remember, the difference between pro and college is the clock stops on every first down. So if they manage the clock right, now this is the two-minute drill. Obviously, Jordan Johnson is very good at it. They practice it every week. They go hurry to the line. The clock doesn't start till the chains are set. Johnson feels pressure, now runs out of it. Heads for the sideline, steps out of bounds at the 32. And a very alert and heads-up play by Jordan Johnson. He got positive yardage. But more important, gets out of bounds to stop the clock. Yeah, obviously right now, Cal Poly in a real big bend but don't break situation. They've gone to just three down linemen. They're dropping eight into coverage. Going to make it real tough to find windows to throw into. Gain of eight, second and two. Johnson throws out here to the flat, and that's caught. And that's a first down. Boy, Cam Warren, a good job of recognizing right where the sticks were. Gets the first down. Yeah, he did, and it's a good first down, and they needed it. I'll tell you, Cal Poly, though, will actually take that. That play took about 10 seconds off the clock and only nets about three yards. So if Cal, that's what Cal Poly wants to do, keep everything in front, maybe give up those three, four, five-yard passes, but make sure nothing gets deep on you. Gain is up to the 37 and a fresh set of downs for the Grizz. The difference here playing defense, of course, is that they it's not just a field goal. They have to score a mm -hmm. touchdown. So you can play defensively a lot different than if it was just three points needed. Pressure comes. Johnson fires out there incomplete. And intended for Nakarado on the slant pattern. Second down. 
I was going to say, you know, where are Jamal Jones and Ellis Henderson, both from on the sidelines on that play? Two very, very good big play receivers, but they trot onto the field goal or onto the field for this second down play. Incomplete pass brings up second and ten. Johnson operates out of the gun. Three man rush. Throws out here and caught by Pearson. And Pearson gets out of bounds. And that'll bring up third and short. So they're working the sidelines nicely, Grady. They are. Cal Poly, though, again, just content to give up those, you know, five, six yard passes. Make, make the clock just bleed a little bit more. Make the Grizzlies have to execute on these third and shorts. This drive started at the 12-yard line. Good job so far of clock management. Still a minute 42, plenty of time. And a timeout remaining. Third and three. Johnson looks, fires, caught first down. So Pearson checked off. He looked left and then checked down to Pearson, and he was just parked right there at the out of bounds line yeah, and you know, first down you're right he's just running a little flat route and sitting down on the sidelines as a check down just in case and uh, surprising that Antko, the outside linebacker is not getting over there to uh, to pick him up just letting him sit there uncovered but I guess if they're gonna keep giving in in only about six seconds is all that took yep if Montana can keep hitting that pass they'll be all right in Cal Poly territory from the 48 Johnson all kinds of time and Pearson all of a sudden has been the preferred target that's his third consecutive catch he's going to be just short of a first down you know that changes things a little bit because now with one timeout you got to hustle and get up to the line of scrimmage because the clock is running this one has burned a lot more time Johnson fires out here to Warren Warren's got a first down at the 33 so Montana effectively just going right down the field using the sideline preserving the timeout and a first down from the 33 just about a minute now off the clock is all and Montana's went about uh, 50 of those yards needed. Balls at the 33. Johnson's got two receivers split left. He's looking that way. Now pumps, now fires, got a man wide open. Warren with the catch and the move inside the 20 yard line. Another first down all the way to the 17. Well, the quickness of Cam Warren. Nice read here across the field. Little pump fake, but he finds Cam Warren sitting on the sideline. A little move right there. Good job. Instead of just going out of bounds, getting a little bit extra. And Montana now in the 18. But the thing here, Chris, still a lot of time, obviously. Yeah. But three straight times now, Montana has been in this situation in the red zone and been unable to get anything out of it. Can they do it this time? Obviously, when they have to. Nakarado and Jones split to the right. Henderson split left and Canada's in the backfield. Johnson fires out here and this one is in and out of the hands of Nakarado. Good pressure that time. Johnson knocked to the turf. Yeah, Cal Poly has dialed up the cover zero pressure a couple times ooh. really effectively and ooh. Johnson took a big hit, didn't he? Yeah, Sam, Sam linebacker Antko just Ooh, tattoos him right in the face on the delivery. Still a minute and one. They've managed the clock very well. Second and ten on the 18. This time, Henderson comes wide right. Jones split left on second down. Johnson, straight drop. Looks, now throws, and that's caught by Canada. Coming underneath the route of the wide receivers. Clock continues to run. It's a third down. What a great tackle because I tell you, that's a well-designed route. You're back one-on-one -on, -one on a linebacker. That could have been a touchdown, but Antko wraps him up. And the clock is now at 42nd mark and ticking. Third down, Johnson. Throws it to the back of the end zone. Incomplete, and a flag comes in. That's going to be pass interference. Yeah, definitely a good call. You'll see it here on the replay. A good call by the officials. Johnson has to now watch right before the ball gets there. Face guarding ball. He never looks back to make a play on the ball, so it's an easy call. Yep. Plus, he makes contact before it arrives. That one's obvious, folks. Interference. Defense. The ball will be placed at the two-yard line. 
This will be a good shot. Good job by our camera crew. Good work right there. Warren yep. was getting ready to get his feet inbounds. Gets taken out a little bit early. And Montana still has one timeout. Well, and that could be huge because yeah, they've huge. got, yeah, first and goal from the two. If they want to choose to run right into the line of scrimmage, yep. you can still do that with a timeout. And Johnson is going to roll right. Fires incomplete. Had a man wide open. Well, that's a tough play, tough catch for your big fullback to make. I like the play call. A little play action, send your fullback to the flat. I think he wanted the tight end first. Oh, just mm. makes the big fullback stretch out. Not a play that he's used to making too often. He can't come up with it. Good effort to extend for the football. So here we go, second and goal from the two. 26 seconds, you still have one timeout. Yep. Johnson under center, rolls, now looks, fires back at the end zone, incomplete. Nobody open in the pattern, so Johnson throws it away, and that brings up third and goal. Boy, this Cal Poly defense, I'll tell you what, can they do it again? Three <laughs> drives, they've allowed deep into their own territory and have stiffened their necks and turned the Grizzlies away. Here they are down on the two. And so far, two straight times, not allowing Montana to get in the end zone. Now third and goal. Johnson puts a man in motion. Johnson looking and still on his feet. Now throws to the end zone, it's incomplete. Boy, Johnson did everything in his power to keep that play alive and just threw it up there for a little jump ball opportunity. Yeah, and I tell you what, Cal Poly's doing such a good job of covering that first option on the play action that Jordan has nowhere to go, forcing him to scramble around and make plays. And my goodness, it comes down to this. 14 seconds, fourth down. Cal Poly has converted once, and none bigger than this first attempt for Montana as they burn their final timeout. 14 seconds to go in the game. Well, this is absolutely amazing. I. You know, they got it down there. I know that the time was getting a little bit low, and there's one timeout. Surprised they didn't choose to run it at least once, maybe. You know, that big old fullback and run it right at them. Cal Poly's been real stiff against the run, but the one early in the first half, don't forget, that fourth and short, they ran right at them and got it. Then on the goal line, they went right at them and got it. But well, choosing to throw three straight times, and now it all comes down to this. And I wonder if we'll see a little something where they're going to roll Johnson out. Maybe give them a chance to either run it in or pass it in. Let's see what they dial up here on fourth and goal from the two. Oh, Cal Poly's going to bring the heat for sure. Johnson! Touchdown, Montana! They convert on fourth down as they go to number 46, Clay Pearson. Great play. Play action right in your face. Looks like it's going to be a sweep, which draws the safety Williams up just a little bit. And Johnson just flips it over the top. That is a brilliantly designed play, and I know one that Coach Henson has in his, in his back pocket just for that situation. Well called, well timed, good execution, and now Worst has to make this extra point. Ball down, kick on the way, and this is good. So with 12 seconds to go in regulation, Montana goes 88 yards and ties the game. You know, I tell you, Chris, this is what athletics are all about. You know, the stuff that legends are made of. This is why you play the game. You're never out of it. You never quit. How about that grizzly defense just sticking with it? How frustrated could they be at their offense today? But, yeah. oh, God, if they hung in there, didn't get frustrated. They just kept turning them away. Last drive, they allowed a, obviously too much, but then they come up with the big blocked field goal, and Jordan Johnson and the offense finally respond. 88 yards in just under two minutes to tie this thing up. Wow. All set up by that blocked field goal with two minutes to go, where it looked as though the Mustangs were ready to put this one away and leave Missoula with a hard-fought win. But 
One play turned this game, and then Montana with an 88-yard drive, and what a great job managing the clock, managing the timeout yeah, to get down there and score. Beautiful by Jordan Johnson. And I'll tell you what, don't, uh, fans, don't, don't forget there's 12 seconds left. I mean, stranger things have happened. I'll never forget last year's double-A state championship game. There was less time when Bozeman was kicking off to Butte. It looked like it was over. But Butte returns it to midfield, runs one play, and kicks a field goal to win it. So I'll tell you what, you got to be sharp on special teams right here. You've got to cover. You've got to tackle and make sure that nothing crazy happens. The squib kick on the ground, and Hubbard's going to field it at the 15 to the 20. Looks for some running room, and he's not going anywhere as he is mauled at the 24-yard line. And we are one play away. Yeah, that's exactly. We're being headed for overtime. The wow. Montana forward scoring drive, 15 plays, 88 yards, 205 off the clock. And Pearson on the two-yard touchdown catch from Jordan Johnson that ties the game at 14. So now Cal Poly looks like they're going to take a knee. And we will be headed for overtime. Well, you mentioned it about, I don't know, 15, 20 minutes ago. You smelled that this might go into overtime. <laughs> you were right. Wow, this is going to be an exciting overtime. Bonus football coming up this afternoon from Missoula. Stay with us back after these words from your local stations. All right, welcome back, everyone. And Grady, the overtime rules pretty simple. Coin toss to, to determine who chooses offense or defense and which end of the field. Then alternating possessions from the 25-yard line. Of course, the game clock is off. Now, here's the catch and where they changed the rules a few years ago. After the third overtime, teams must go for two after a touchdown. You know, we do the same thing in, uh, in high school football. Obviously, the only difference is we go from the 10. Right. And I think it would make things a little interesting in high school even to back it up to the 20 or the 25 and just, you know, just make that field goal if that's what it comes down to just a little bit tougher but I really like the college overtime rules I think it's it makes it fun and it's something that I even think the NFL has, has tweaked a little bit and, and changed to make their overtimes a little bit better but I, I think they would even be an enjoyable to watch an NFL game uh, start them from the 30 or the 40. All right let's go down on the field for a Honda sideline report and Sean Rainey. Yeah, guys, as we head into overtime, one thing, important thing to know is Montana has the number one red zone defense in the big sky. They're only allowing their opposing um, offenses to score 56% of the time on touchdowns, guys. Thank you, Sean. And now, Coach, put your, your coaching hat on again because I suspect that if you win the coin toss, you're probably going to want to let the other team go to work on offense first, right? Yeah, definitely. You want to put your defense out there and uh, see what you have to get. Right. Because obviously if you get a stop, Switch then you just got to kick a field goal to win it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know, if you get three, here. you got to get seven, whatever. So you go defense first and, well, these teams, you can tell just by that captain handshake out there, there's a lot of respect oh, yeah. Yeah, between I, these two teams. I noticed that right away. And Cal Poly won the coin toss. So this means Montana will have the football first from the 25. And I think that I think the one the one advantage you have in this overtime is in that coin toss is just what you talked about because you know exactly what you're going to Cal Poly will know exactly what they need right. when they get the football back. Well, and notice what end Jordan Tripp took to play <laughs> yeah. this first overtime in yep. if there's only one, and if they have their choice, of course they're going to play it down here. Now the numbers after regulation were tied on the scoreboard. We're not tied so much. As far as the statistics, 404 yards of total offense for Cal Poly, well, just 290. Yeah. And, and if you really, that 90 of those yards, Chris, with that last drive. So you take yeah. those 90 out, it's it's double. Time of possession as well. So first down in this extra period for Montana. Canada's got some over the outside. Canada stiffs arm one man. Picks up a couple on the play, but not much else. Man, what a, what a play by yep. Samudi, the corner out there. He has just battled. So impressed with his Cal Poly defense. Uh, how many games we watch where once Canada gets to the edge, he just he just makes makes those corners look silly out yep. there. But man, watch this play. I mean, it, it looked like it was all set up, and he just battles and battles and gets him out of bounds. Nice play. Samudi, good job of stretching the play. So they give him two, second and eight from the 23. Johnson straight drop, looks and fires. Got a man at the 10, Henderson. Henderson to the five, stretches for the end zone. 
He got it. And he got it. He wow. got to the pylon. What an effort by Henderson. Wow. Watch this effort, folks. He runs a great curl route, first of all, perfect route. But now watch the effort. Turns to the outside, works, works, reaches, gets the pylon. Huge play. And you can see the reaction from Jordan Johnson. Boy, I thought for sure he was going to be wrapped up around the five-yard line, but he was not going to be denied. Now the extra point, the all-important extra point from Worst. Kick is on its way, and it's good. So just like that, bang, Montana scores in the extra period, and now it goes to the Cal Poly offense to try to answer. What a resilient group of Montana Grizzlies this afternoon. That is impressive here. Montana Ford scoring drive, two plays, 25 yards, 23 of those. And again, Grady, Look watch the, the effort. effort. Yeah, mm -hmm. just wow. <laughs> oh, that's a great effort. Well, now the north end zone is going absolutely ballistic, and Cal Poly has to operate heading into it. Well, they've been good all day. Now let's see if they can be just as good when they have to be. They need a touchdown to extend the game. Montana jumping all over on defense. Graves keeps the football on the pitch. Oh, hey. taken down. John Conagata behind the line of scrimmage. Conagata finally didn't have anybody at his feet. Nobody cutting him. Oh, I bet he's just elated for the first time ever on the perimeter. Look, he's clean and he's able to make a play, and he makes it. That's the key. Great job. Man, is this crowd fired up. Loss of three, second and 13 from the 28. And maybe the first time today they were able to get Ivory. And man, you couldn't get it at a better time. Second down. They swing it out here to Ivory. He's got a little bit of running room. And he'll be met by Bo Tully at the 25-yard line. And he'll get back to the original line of scrimmage and nothing else. Well, that, that's another play they've run. They motion a, a guy to get numbers on the perimeter. They motion a third receiver over there. Then they throw the swing pass. It's a well-designed play that's been executed. But I think the Grizzly defense is really smelling it right now. This is going to come down to these next two plays. If they can force a, a fourth down here. Third and ten. Dan O'Graves has gone all the way at quarterback. Huge couple of plays. Two receivers set to the right. He's got one man down to the left. Graves out of the gun. Pumps, looks, fires. And this one is it's over. intercepted. Montana wins the football game. Oh! -ho! Wow, and when you see the replay on this, they ran a hook and go on the outside. The outside receiver is wide open. But Graves, and maybe the only bad decision he makes all day, he decides to go to the inside receiver, and he's triple covered. Both linebackers and the safety, you can't see the outside receiver, but promise me, folks, he's wide open running up the sideline because the corner bit. But Graves throws it to the inside receiver, a poor decision, throws it short, triple coverage, and Montana has escaped. Well, you cannot underestimate how huge this win is for Montana. When you put it in perspective of the Big Sky Conference, Montana had the early loss to Northern Arizona. They've got Eastern Washington coming up on the schedule. They absolutely had to have a win this afternoon, and I think they showed us something of, of real character and championship pedigree in that second half, and in particular, the fourth quarter. Oh, there is no question, Chris. That's heart, that's character, and as you said, that championship pedigree of the Montana Grizzly football program showing itself at the right time. A bunch of players stepping up and making big, big plays. Man, an offense that had been flat really all day finally rose up when it needed to and really got the job done in big fashion. Let's go back and take a look now at the Northwestern Energy play of the game. I had to made a case for that one, but here's what set it all up. This was a fourth and goal. Johnson to Pearson, and that tied the game with just 12 seconds to go in regulation. Of course, forced the game into overtime, and then Montana, Brock Coyle with the interception at the goal line to seal it for the Grizz.
Oh, I, I tell you, they just never quit. I mean, talk about the heart, the perseverance. They never quit believing. They never quit working out there. And well, you got to give credit to Cal Poly's defense oh, all day. I yeah. mean, those kids played their hearts out. They made Montana take four tries from the two-yard line before they finally got it in. But, man, how about this Montana Grizzly team? Just never quitting, never quitting on each other, getting frustrated with each other, staying with it to the end. And, getting the job done man this this will go down as one of those special wins that you know you'll never forget about in grizzly history but as you said chris this really gives them a chance now if they would have lost this they'd have been in some trouble oh uh, no question about it a must win for montana they did it in dramatic fashion the play of the game and our player of the game today we showed you the play of the game and here's the ford player of the game jordan johnson boy look at his numbers how they improved in the second half. He finished 22 with 39 for 242 yards and two touchdowns. Did have that streak snapped where he did throw the interception, but who cares yeah. when you look back at this game? Bottom line, Montana very much alive and still running in the Big Sky Conference as they pick up the win this afternoon here in Missoula. Well, Coach Walsh has to just be wondering what happened. Oh, my goodness. You can't, you can't say enough about Cal Poly and the effort that their kids put forth today here in Washington Grizzly. But on the flip side, you can't say enough about the character and the heart that these Grizzlies showed. And Jordan Johnson, what an unlikely, unlikely candidate for player of the game. Five minutes ago, I, you know, I was thinking, man, this might have been one of his worst games ever. And he turned it on at the right time, responded well, and won a big game for his football team. Overtime final for Montana as they come from behind to beat the Mustangs from Cal Poly. Beautiful afternoon here in Missoula for football and a great win for Grizz fans everywhere. For all of us at Max Media, for Grady Bennett, I'm Chris Byer saying so long, everybody.